love this place! <laughs> Double D? Yeah, man. Well, turn it up, man. Let's just go in and, like, kill all the orcs, right? They're the bad guys. Who gives a shit? We just hack and slash and we loot their dead bodies, right? Hack and slash, kill them all, you know, conquer the infidels. Boy, that campaign sounds like a barrel of fun, doesn't it? <laughs> As somebody who's, who's opening a refrigerator and leaning in, right, is the language of a woman. Somebody who's opening their refrigerator and being cut off halfway through that lean is the voice of, a, like, a mermaid or a siren, right? Da, da. This is not the face of the hobby anymore. Uh, and I think there's been mistakes made in years past where people assumed that D&D &D players were all, you know, white dudes in a basement, um, which is which has been a faulty assumption for a lot of years and gets more and more false every day. Uh, and so it's, in my viewpoint, honestly, guys like me can't, can't leave soon enough. I just had to be born with empathy and a weakness for socialism and femboys. For socialism and femboys. For socialism and femboys. We gotta put a little hot sauce on the taco, you know what I mean? We want this dwarf to be the dwarfiest dwarf. Right, right, right. We right. want the elf to be the elfiest elf. And just the dashiest dash of Tabasco. The voices need to carry across water. I'm a creative. Um, it's a huge drain, right? Because fans can be awful. Al zurdo de mierda no le podés dar ni un no, milímetro. Pero me podés definir zurdo de mierda que no Todos lo los que, digamos, los colectivistas, <risa> los que ponen, digamos, o sea, esa idea. A ver, ¿Por qué le pones de mierda, digamos? Porque son una mierda. You Ouch. say white lives matter, they don't. White lives don't matter because white lives aren't a thing. I disagree. I disagree, Gary. Lutherville, Marina Dallas, Otisburg. Otisburg. Who's this monster back? She's got her own place, man. Otis Bird. It's a little bitty place. Otis Bird. Okay, I just wipe it off. That's all. It's a little town. Yep. Okay. We'll do it live. Okay. Oh. No. We'll do it live! Fuck it! Do it live! I can, I'll write it and we'll do it live! Fucking thing sucks! Thank you. I enjoyed having you here. You're a very good co-host. Man, your sinewy muscles are just ripped. And look how your gleaming sweat just comes off your golden body. And the women are just looking the same. And all of them want double D. Howdy, howdy, howdy. How's everybody doing? We got some first timers in the chat, Double D. I saw that. Stwassum. Love it. You are Stwassum. See some of the regular Jeff Hatches here. Good to see Nick you Lee's again. Nick said this is his first one in a while. Yeah, I noticed. Yep. Cal's here. Surly, Larry and Jaco, all the usuals. Um, Look like they are parked and ready to be entertained. They are. Are you not entertained? Are you not entertained? Thank you for um, bearing with us uh, last week as I uh, went to uh, Daughter D's art show. It's very, very nice. She did not win, but... Um, she should have fixed. It was one of those things that... Um, I'm not even saying she should have won, but I think there were other people who kind of got screwed. Like... I mean, I know it's just a college thing, but it's like, all right, that one? Okay. <laughs> but anyway. But yeah, she made, she had a very good uh, very good collection. Very good collection. That, of course, on the um, on the microphone is our old buddy, Crazy Mouse. How are you up? doing? How's everybody doing tonight? Yeah. Bringing the heat. Did you, uh, did you miss us last week, Crazy Mouse? Uh... Wait, last week we didn't. Well, that's what I mean. Did you oh, miss miss not yeah, having the, show? the whole thing? Yeah, I mean, everybody missed everybody last week. <laughs> Glad to be back. Glad to be back. And uh, fortunately, for a second there, I thought you meant like that I was absent. And I'm thinking, yeah, yeah, well, really? Hold on a second. <laughs> come, on. come on, there, crazy mouse. All right, we uh we have a guest. We do. And uh, let us not eating uh, cheese and crackers in the green room. Get him yeah. out of here. No. Give him some wine, some bum wine in there. That, that church, church wine. wine. <laughs> Are you filled up on the bum wine, <laughs> Ryan? 
in our I, <laughs> I'm full of the bum wine. <laughs> This, of course, Ryan David. Uh, you know him from Nerd Cognito. You know him from uh, Saturday. Parts, Parts Unknown. Parts Unknown. Yes, he's he's within shouting distance of us, sort of uh, ge- geographically. So, um, yeah, our okay. neighbor to the south. That's right. We uh, wanted to have you uh, back on for a while. Oh, thank thanks for having and, me. Uh, I'm, I'm glad to be here. So, <laughs> yeah, and uh, you uh, have been busy since then. In addition to uh, Let's see, you kind of trans didn't uh, get rid of the Nerd Keto, Nerd Cognito pod, podcast. Uh, you also kind of transferred it over to YouTube. Is that correct? Sort of, sort of. Uh, the podcast is still going and it's going strong, right? Uh, it's every, every Tuesday we drop. We're uh, now arguably the largest podcast in our little corner of the hobby that's audio only. So that's really good. But, um, you know, we bounced around on some of our friend streams and we realized that there was just a little community of our podcast friends. And a lot of them are here in the chat. I'm taking a look and I'm seeing lots of friendly faces and yep. they wanted a place to hang out on Saturdays. So kind of as a joke, <laughs> it started and we said, well, you know, we're going to start the Saturday speakeasy where we're just going to drink and go in with no format, no plan, no agenda, no filter. And uh, our little baby channels now about six months old and growing pretty well. Saturday Speakeasy is one of the like destination streams on Saturday afternoon. So I, I couldn't be happier. It's just a nice release, right? We plan so much. It's nice not to plan anything. Yeah. I gotta, I gotta jump in. Yeah, because you told me you're getting like crazy numbers on Saturday, like a hundred live. Yeah, that we is, we we broke a hundred live viewers uh, this past Saturday, which is insane. Because like like I said, the channel's six months old. We've got just under three hundred subscribers. So the fact that so many people enjoy. Well, who doesn't enjoy drinking a little too much and saying things you probably shouldn't on the internet? And that's what it's all about. So, <laughs> congratulations um, on that nice number. That's awesome. No, oh, it's a great number. Um, we know we're never going to make any money on it, so we might as well have a good time with it. And a lot of other folks hop in and have a good time with it. So that's that's the whole purpose. That's kind of how you have to uh, yeah. have to look at it. Like you're not you know you ain't getting rich in this uh, no. <laughs> in this. <laughs> This but line of work. There are guys that, that still have that pipe dream, right? That are mm-hmm. years into it. And they're like, I'm going to retire as a YouTuber. And I'm like, just enjoy what you have. Enjoy the people yeah. that you meet and the conversations that you have, because it's, it's not going to happen. It's, it's, it's akin to the high school kids saying, I don't need to worry about what I'm going to do. Cause I'm going to play pro ball. Maybe oh, yeah, my, my wife's a fifth grade teacher. She, she has to kind of, <laughs> break kids dreams every year yeah i'm just going i'm going straight to the nfl uh you know, it's like, no you're okay not. well do you, do you have a do you have a backup plan you know yeah, it's just, just in know. case yeah my backup plan is the nba <laughs> yeah, yeah well and I'm, I'm i'm sure that has been said at some point uh <laughs> well mouse I, I don't know if you knew this but in another life i was a uh, an educator in public school system oh, really? and uh that is legitimately what i've heard more times than not, I was in a very urban public school for a very long time. And the game plan was NFL, NBA, or welfare. And I'm not exaggerating. <laughs> they knew that that was their life goal. And it, it was Damn. it was kind of sad and disheartening, which is one of the reasons why I exited education in general, just because yeah. it was it, it was a grind and it was an unrewarding grind because there was just no, no light at the end of that tunnel. What what was the age of these? Uh, Originally I was a high school teacher and then the district reorganized a couple of times. Can't imagine why their enrollment was dropping. Mm -hmm. And and I actually ended my career in an elementary school. If it's funny you you said that about the high school students, because I've, we, I have a senior in high school and she comes home every third fourth day so and so got a d1 offer and the latest one was to play at yukon 
Wow. And I said, Yukon, Yukon. <laughs> right. That's, that six foot kid yeah. that no one's ever heard of is getting recruited to play at Yukon. Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> and then there was another one just recently. I just told Double D this in a text message just probably two days ago. His choices were Penn State. <laughs> Or our local university. <laughs> really, those are your those are your two choices. Yeah. Huh? To go play Lions college or community college, <laughs> or, or to go play college football. Okay, you know, you know, KG. I, th I think these people are just kind of yeah. fooling with Pull, everybody in their class, pulling your leg, and everyone's and, falling and for it. More often than not, they were fooling themselves too, Mouse. That's, oh my God, it's ridiculous. Yeah. I also wonder. So, as a senior, she was getting a lot of mail correspondence from colleges just to like hey give us a look and for some reason she got one from the university of alabama and i wondered if in her mind she was getting recruited by alabama when in reality she was just on a mailing list <laughs> <laughs> so i just wonder if these student athletes are thinking my gosh i got a letter from you know whoever i wonder if they're actually recruiting me and that's their mindset. I honestly don't know. Well, I hate to say it, but it, it's you said they were thinking. And my main motivation for leaving that career path was that thinking was eliminated from the equation. Right. Oh, yeah. It, it, it's feelings first, man. Mm -hmm. and, and thinking might be second, but it's probably third. You know, feelings, equity, thinking. Mm. And I swallowed a lot of comments because God knows I never say what I'm thinking, right? I got to swallow them at home. <laughs> like I'm thinking, but I got to, uh, I got one thing here. Um, Cal says, you know, they're, I guess they're talking about Harry Potter for some reason, Harry Potter in the chat must be JK Rowling must be on, on their, uh, on their mind. Well, that's big on the uh, radar this week, right? Yeah. I was going to bring that up kind of get your thoughts on it. Um, you know, his, daughter loved harry potter um you know i guess my uh my daughter did too good for kids bit lame yeah i mean i'm I, they're, the movies are good with like riff tracks when riff tracks was still <laughs> kind of funny um but yeah uh jk rowling um kind of uh took a stand this week scotland has a uh a law where i guess it went into effect april fool's day i'm sure that was uh totally by coincidence that uh if you uh i don't know how it's uh, how it's completely worded, but if you sort of misgender someone and it's sort of deemed hate and something kind of bad happens, you can go to prison for seven years. <laughs> right. And she was like, okay. So on April 1st, she's like on Twitter, here's these, uh, you know, I don't know, she listed about 10 perverts, uh, <laughs> you know, who are, you know, <laughs> you know, kind of, I don't know if they were uh, if they had been convicted of a crime. I, I, I got to be careful here, but um, they were doing some unsavory things. And he's like, she's like, oh, what a great woman. What a great woman. You know, and at the end, she's like, ah, just kidding. They're all men. <laughs> and then she's like, I'm out of the country now. I'll be in, you know, on this date. Uh, you guys can uh, go ahead and arrest me if you want. And uh, I kind of called their bluff. And I guess they said that she's not going to be arrested. So yeah, I, I read you, today they they they're they're not going to choose to prosecute. So, yeah, because they know <laughs> that would expose the law, which it, it's kind of dangerous because um, it's like okay, fine, she's she gets a um, she gets a pass, but what if a couple of dudes like you know me, you or Mouse, you know, just just say it online and then kind of quietly, oh yeah, well we're just going to quietly arrest you. And we're going to quietly prosecute you. And then, oh, yeah. And then now you're going to spend time in jail. Right. We don't it may get not the be pass. seven years, but yeah, but we don't. Yeah, we don't get that pass. But, and, and that's strategic, too. Right. They know that if they give her the pass. They are giving someone the pass that has the funds and the financial means to just shine sunlight onto the situation where if you, me or mouse go to prison. We can't, I mean, we can lawyer up to an extent, but not to the extent that she can, number one, and not to the extent that she can pull media, number two. So, of course, they're not going to go after her, but they're, they're going to go after, you know, Seamus that got drunk and popped off at the pub. So, yeah, yeah. yeah someone like uh, Count Dankula. Right. Um, 
you know, I, gotta that, be, I gotta be careful. I'm cute and adorable. I'd get worked <laughs> over in prison like a mofo. <laughs> it's just I can stop attest. showering. <laughs> I can attest. They love. They pick him up by his little mouse tail and say, "Oh, what a cute little mouse you are." You can't kill what you can't let, catch. Let me stick you inside. Oh no, no, we don't want to do that. Um, <laughs> yeah. So I, 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 I don't know what to think of J.K. Rowling. I mean, I think on other issues, she's she's very very liberal, but it's hard not to kind of like her for having the guts to stand up to this. And really, she does take a lot of hate. And look, she could have just ridden off into the sunset and gone off Twitter and said nothing and lived, you know, like a queen. Right. But, you know, she sees something wrong that we all see is wrong. And, um, you know, she's not afraid to uh, put her money where her mouth is. So um, I've, I've never been, I don't know, I, I've never minded having kind of temporary alliances. Hey, Hungar, $2 super chat. Hi, everyone. Thank Hi, you. Hello to Broke you. The seal. Love it. Yep. You know, it's kind of like the old Ray, Ronald Reagan thing, you know, if somebody's, you know, kind of on your side, you know, an 80 percent, if they're with you 80 percent of the time. And I'm not saying she is, but, you know, they're, they're not an enemy. You know, they're an 80 percent ally or, you know, in right. J.K. Rowling's case, maybe a 40 percent ally. You know, She maybe could be an ally flirting. on this cause and that's OK, too. Yeah, exactly. It's like you don't some people get they don't they like saying they want they say they want to win a war but they don't know how to fight it if you know what i mean it's like you do have to kind of see allies where they're allies and ally up with them and yeah they may not agree with you all the time but use the enemy them. of the enemy is my friend yeah exactly it's like use them for a while okay you know we don't agree on you know a lot of other things but guess what we'll team up and call these lunatics out no See what else we got here. What hungar say that got taken back? I don't know. Were you being a bad boy, hungar? Message retracted. <laughs> <laughs> she's she's normal. She's old fashioned somewhat. Yeah. Well, just believing there's <laughs> there's two sexes makes you <laughs> old fashioned these days, doesn't it? <laughs> Hell says except when it's Garibay. <laughs> I have a funny <laughs> Garibay story now. Um, I'll bring it. Oh, we want to hear it. Yeah. <laughs> he and I are friends on Twitter now. Oh, there you go. Damn. <laughs> you, keep, you keep making uh, alliances with these people that uh, that hate my guts, Brian. Well, <laughs> I'm going to start well, putting litmus tests up for you. <laughs> <laughs> it, we know it, how it, much we love those, right? <laughs> it came about kind of as a gag, right? Uh, when the Fox... Uh, deal was originally sort of put into motion uh and we announced daniel fox for nerd cognito uh, i i said as a joke and i tagged him in it i said you know next up is going to be j.s garibay <laughs> <laughs> and i said Damn. legitimately i find the man fascinating and i don't think that a conversation with him would be any less fascinating and going into it identifying hey we're really far apart. Uh, I think it would be fun. And uh, like he the followed me and I followed theory. him back. And now every once in a while, uh, we get an interesting quote retweet from one of the nerd cognito tweets from Mr. Garibay. And it's, it's all, it's all a good thing. So who knows, who knows what's <laughs> going to happen down the road. Uh, he's such an interesting guy, double D. He is. He is. Um, <laughs> How's that for being diplomatic? Well, I don't know if you ever saw, but we had his DM on, uh, Mike. And uh, yeah, he was just saying how um, he's, he, he is something else. He's a, he's a little angrier than um, than maybe you want to believe in like real life. But uh, hold on one second as I take care of this super chat. Move that up a little bit. Give you the respect you deserve, my friend. Hungar the Starvarian. I've been F H S and popping pillies, man. I feel like a rock star. <laughs> a rock star. Um, that is good to hear. Just be careful. Uh, don't uh don't get yourself into too much yeah, before trouble. Before you there. dip your spoon into the pudding, make sure you put on a blanket. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thank you, Hungar. Thank was, you very much. I was actually on a stream uh with uh, Hungar and James uh 
like this past weekend i just popped in real quick and uh said hello it was good catching up with those guys um yeah um so i lost my train of thought there oh garabay yes. he he, blo- he blocked me no what yeah he blocked me on twitter i think I, it was after i had mike uh mike on webhead mike i didn't even you that was something i don't even i didn't even i wonder know. i wonder if i'm still still on on his good side of it a look now <laughs> we uh thing is we never really interacted on twitter i think it's just he got wind of all the efaps and uh then i think he probably somebody probably told him that mike was on spilling the tea on scotty g and uh next thing you know i'm trying to uh see what scott's saying on twitter and then boom you're blocked hungar says double d he'll see you at venture con hungar are you going holy shit that's another thing, guys. Remember, VentureCon is this summer. It's just in Madison. So if you're kind of near, yeah, near, or you know, you can get there and don't mind taking the start time. walking. Let me tell you something. Start walking there. <laughs> yeah. Put the thumb up. <laughs> Someone driving by will be going. <laughs> the rules of the road. Yeah. Cash, grass, or ass. <laughs> Which one are you gonna give, boys? Which one are you gonna give? Um, uh, apparently I'm still, I'm still on the good side because I got, uh, I got a little tasty treat. Uh, tell, tell him to unblock me in the, in the interest <laughs> of, in the interest of uh glass nosed, <laughs> tell Scotty G to unblock me. <laughs> Hungar is just going to drive. Okay, cool. California. Okay. Yeah, Cal. Well, we understand. Hey, Cal, does that stand for California Venoni? Or is that like, is that like a name? Cause I just realized you're in California and your name is Cal. So uh, yeah, you are excused. <laughs> uh, yeah. Nick venture con is yeah, in someone Madison. Jeff Hatch asked where it is. Yep. Uh, Nick is in it's in Madison. Yep. About eight hours from us. That's are in my driving? driving zone. I am. Oh, yeah. uh, my cutoff anymore is four hours. <laughs> I, I, like, I, I just I like can't driving. do it. I can't do it anymore. <laughs> As a driver so much or as it. a passenger? A- a- any sort of uh, motor Car. vehicle. Yeah. Four hours. Four hours. Four hours. Would it be, I got a question on a plane. That, Ryan, would it be four hours one day and could you do four hours the next day? Yes. Yes. In fact, uh, I, I took a little road trip uh, down to Cherokee, North Carolina, and uh, made a pit stop in the southern, southern tip of West Virginia because I, I could do that. All right. Uh-huh. So, but four hours max. I'm just, I'm just an old man anymore. I can't, I can't hang like I used to. So, I'm okay as long as it's not at night. Um, at night, I'm a little. You know, Those deers scare me. They do. Yeah. They're uh-huh. so, they're so dumb. <laughs> Mrs. D was just saying that she's like, cars have been around like over a hundred years. Haven't these fucking things learned? <laughs> but like, like in the woods, they hear a branch crack and they run the opposite direction yeah. they hear an 18 wheeler come and they run right at it <laughs> oh not in my neighborhood my house backs woods right i'll never have neighbors thank goodness because there's a very wealthy person that owns an estate that's right behind my house right i don't have an estate i'm just i'm just i happen <laughs> to be backed to an estate and the whole wooded area of the estate is is my is where my backyard ends and then there's just acres of woods uh, I call them the dog deer because they'll come right up to the porch and you can go out and they'll just stare at you. They'll eventually run, but th- not skittish here. They mm, they are yeah. something else. Ooh, it's Warren. You've been hit by, struck by a star variant. Yeah, I've, I, I got to, uh, I should have loaded up that picture. I did send it, uh, Warren, the one that you made, um, Thunderstruck. Hunger struck. Yes. <laughs> I'll see if I can, we can't pull that up. Uh, yeah. Well, great, great you've been hit it. by struck by a Starvarian. Is that smooth criminal from Michael Jackson? Uh, it sounds like it. Yeah. yeah. You've been hit by, hit by a smooth Starvarian. That is two. I'm trying to carry, carry this one. That decimal <laughs> point over. It's like 80 bucks. Double D. What is it? What's 80 bucks? Oh yeah. From the, the $2. Chatter. Yeah. Well, you know, $80 and free treatment in the Canadian healthcare system. Yes. <laughs> yeah. It's so much better than ours. 
They right. have an injection with your name on it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <clears throat> so, um, I, I kind of wanted to talk about this because I think it is sort of relevant. It's already been relevant. And that is uh, Ed Piscor's uh, tragic end this week. Ed Piscor is, of course, uh, from cartoonist Kayfabe. And he is actually uh, from parts pretty close to uh, Ryan. So you kind of, I know you got kind of a local angle sort of on this, uh, at least in one respect, right? Yeah, not a good local angle. Yeah, but... yeah, bad, bad local <laughs> angle. So it's like, I know some of you are probably like, well, it's comics. What does that have to do with gaming? Yeah, I mean, look, they're, we all know they're, they're sort of cousins anyway. You know, we've had, you know, comic book creators on here who are also gamers, a lot of crossover. But I would also kind of urge you guys to kind of think back because just a couple months ago, you know, I kind of detailed, spent a whole live stream talking about Twatgate. We remember Twatgate, don't we? Um, let me see if I can uh, jog your memory. Remember this, the worst people you've never met. We, we remembered uh, Cleo Bell. This was kind of a... Uh, I guess kind of a, a love letter to Zach Smith, Zach Sabbath. Uh, but she kind of detailed how some of these same people operate on our end. Guys, it's the same species. It's the exact same species that, that we're talking about as far as what happened with Ed Piscor. And what could have happened with Zach Smith, what could have happened with Jim Desbro, a.k.a. Grim Jim, who admitted, you know, these the people involved in Twatgate made him, you know, borderline suicidal. Um, so I, th I think it does, you know, kind of, we, we should take at least a look at it and at least kind of document it, if not uh, just for entertainment, but for the future. Did you ever watch Cartoonist Kayfabe, the YouTube channel, Ryan? Uh, here and there. I was not yeah. a regular by any means. Me but... either. Yeah. Exactly. It's um, him and Jim Rugg, two kind of cartoonists. You know, I mean, they're not, I mean, they, they did their own thing, but they're not like industry. They're not like an Ethan Van Skyver, you know, or somebody like that, you know, a full-fledged like. No, but they're not Main Tumblr streamers. artists either. They're one exactly. level underneath, right? Yeah, there's they're sort of in that in that mid zone. Uh, but what one thing you can't deny is that they they did love comics. I mean, you know, especially Ed, like he he loved comics. Now, to be fair, because uh, I you know I think it's you we should be fair. Uh, he's also a bit of a leftist himself, and the thing that ended up kind of catching him in the end. He wasn't like a huge participant in, but he sort of kind of participated in certain things. Like I know he, he was kind of involved in throwing shade at Mike Barron <clears throat> from Comicsgate, you know, old Mike Barron, who I think worked on, he worked on Punisher maybe. Um, so Ed Piscor is not a saint, uh, certainly as we'll see. Uh, but even from our perspective, he's not, you know, the kind of guy that we would think is, uh, you know, kind of on our side. But um, he didn't deserve, I think, you know, and I, I would think everybody here agrees that he he doesn't deserve the the fate that he, you know, ended up having. Um, it, it, it is kind of a they're typing in double D. He worked on the Badger and Punisher. Mike Barron. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Mike Barron is a good dude. Um, you know, follow him on Twitter too. And uh, yeah, they were trying to you know call him like, oh, he's a fascist. Fuck that, you know. And in that respect, I would say fuck Ed Piscor, and I will say fuck Ed Piscor pretty soon here too. But I will also say that um, that does not mean <laughs> you know he should have um, suffered the fate that he suffered. So. 
Yeah, that's that's their channel. It's still up. It's kind of weird because <laughs> um, after what happened, you know, Ed said keep the channel going and keep uploading stuff. So that's happening. So you're getting like uploads every day, and it's it's really kind of creepy. Um, if you look, there's like an upload today, and it's like every all every comment is like, oh my god, can't believe you know Ed, blah blah blah. I saw that that they're they're maintaining putting new content out. I don't even know I, if I could do something like that after. <laughs> well, you know? doubly so when when we see kind of kind of what happened to go ahead and throw that up there. Our uh, our friend uh, James. Good. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. Give me the controls again. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> what does what does deserve have to do with anything? Yeah, yeah, I understand. Deserves got nothing to do with it. Jim Rugg, the first thing I thought of when I saw that picture, he looks like Mr. Howell. <laughs> Thurston Howell. Yeah. <laughs> Lovey. Um, <laughs> and that's not an insult. It's it's nothing, not meant in it as anything. It's just that's the first thing I thought of when I saw him was he looked like Mr. Howell. All right. So this all kind of took place in a real compressed time, didn't it, Ryan? It was very, very like, at least in my sphere, it seemed like very quick, right? Like a week and a half, maybe? Yeah. A week, two weeks, maybe? All right. So one day, you know, like a thunderbolt, and I'm sure, you know, I'm sure Ed Piscor, probably his heart sank, you know, when he this came out. He probably didn't realize at the, you know, <laughs> at that moment that, you know, that would be the beginning of the end. But all right, so this is from a girl molly there's two mollies involved in this and it doesn't really matter because we don't need to name the last names but this is uh young we'll call her younger molly who is 17 or was 17 was 17 it was yeah. 17 yeah okay ed piscor is a creep he likes little high school girls and slid into my dm god i hate that term sliding into <laughs> dm sorry that's a <laughs> personal thing uh when i was 17 years old i didn't know him and he found me simply by me liking one of his pictures, sending me a post of myself in my school uniform, calling me a cute, nerdy girl, and saying to come out to Pittsburgh and stay with him. Did he take me out to lunch to meet other PG cartoonists? Overall fucking weird, with no gray area for what he was trying to do over the course of a year. Now, I'll stop here and say she released, you know, not, nobody looks good when you're you know the actual dms are there you know but at the time she wasn't saying you're cute you know oh you know you're a creep she was like oh huh, yeah they're great well it was just like a conversation um continuing obvious to anyone on this planet calling me a good girl and a naughty girl all the time uh, obviously not appropriate creepy sending me unfinished pages of his something as a secret and gassing me up constantly and basically trying to groom me into whatever the fuck saying my art was so good and saying he'd promote my work eventually as COVID phased out. And I think he saw, I was not just somebody, not just some nobody high school girl drawing gore art, gore art. Ugh. I started ghosting him eventually understanding this was weird as fuck. So I'm not sure what the catalyst was, but she released this. Obviously, not much defending this. Um, if guys, if you're a middle aged guy, <laughs> don't talk to women under certainly under uh, you know eighteen. But I would I would go so far as to say like twenty seven. Yeah, twenty seven. <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a good number. Ryan, I was on twenty five in my head. Yeah, yeah. Just I mean, unless just deal with them politely. If you have to do for like work. I, I, there's a couple of young girls I, I have to deal with at work. They are very nice, and I don't think they're these type of girls. But still, like I watched my boundaries uh, because something got in the water in this last generation, and they hate middle-aged white men. Maybe they are. Maybe they always did, and they just had tolerance, <laughs> a little more tolerance. But there is no mistake in it. Uh, a full like I would say it's more than half just hate middle-aged white men and they will just for the fun of fun of it, try to fuck up your life. I mean, it's, just, it's not even in doubt. 
if they have a chance to make you look bad or they'll get, you know, they can actually profit from it. Holy shit. They will do it. Now, Ed should have known better. Obviously underage girl. If he didn't know, and he found out she was underage, he should have said, I'm sorry. I, I thought you were an adult, you know, <laughs> let's cut this conversation off and Homer uh, Simpson back into the bush. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> go, go Homer back into the bush. <sighs> but I don't know. I, it's, it's one of those things. It's like, it's not defend defensible, but let me also say this. If she had tried to press charges for what he did, quote unquote, this isn't a crime on a couple different levels. A there's, there's, I don't think he posted anything, you know, graphic to her. And you know what? I mean, Pennsylvania law would not prosecute this guy, even if even if he had. James' opinions are his and his alone and do not reflect anyone else that happens to be in the area at the time. Well, James, you reflect my opinions a lot of the time. I would say most of the time, even though there's a couple of things we uh, don't agree on. Thank you so much, by the way, $5. Um, so I'm, I'm sure you probably agree with all that, right, uh, boys? I mean, if you're yes, asking me or the, the chat, caveat, yeah. and I'm not throwing. <laughs> yeah, go go ahead, Ryan. Go ahead. I I I, I was gonna say I don't want to throw him or her under the bus on this one, but to be fair, what was released was very cherry picked. We don't have a full yes. conversation. We yeah. have snippets, right? Yep. So we don't exactly. know. Uh, now, you know, oh, that's such the white man thing to say. Well, it, it's true. Did you tell him you were 17? Yeah, did he know? Um, and maybe he did. We don't know. And didn't care. Um, well, good. Hold right. on. I don't know if the word 17 was ever used, but sending me a post of myself in my school uniform. So he knew she was in high school. Yeah. You know? And granted, there are some 18-year-old girls in high school, but those are pretty rare. In high school, as a senior, you're 17. Well, like it's half. You know, half the, the first half of the year, half the girls and, well, and guys are going to be right. 17, half are going to be now 18. Now to be devil's but, advocate, you know. why play the chance? Oh, God, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he fucked himself. So oh, yeah. he knew she was in high school. Yeah. Yeah, and if I was this girl's father, you know, I'd, I'd probably want to visit this guy. Um Right yes. out of the time you're coming out of your coma, I'm coming out of jail and I'm going to do it again. <laughs> so, yeah. So, I, you know, obviously it's like you, you kind of have to see that he did wrong and he does probably deserved. He does definitely deserve something, you know, for it. Um, But again, I guess this is what we're going to debate tonight. Um, What did he deserve? All right. So let's uh, continue. All right, so once that came out, okay, then Molly Wright, uh, this one, and she gets mentioned later on. Um, and she says, it's come to my attention that an experience I had in Pittsburgh is similar to several women's experiences regarding Ed Piscor. I reached out to Ed, and he eagerly invited me over. We had plenty of fun and discussed animation and comics. This was until he asked me to suck his bleep in exchange for his agent's number. All right, so obviously that sounds bad. Let, let's be clear. She was not 17. She was She's a woman. Um, and that is her interpretation. And I think he has a different interpretation in his suicide letter. He then asked me to join him for an open relationship so that if I wanted to eat uh, some kitty cat, I'd be free to do so. I have recently learned he was attempting to line up some of those gals at that time. And guess what? Today I learned some of them were minors. We all did. Ed and, I, Ed and I's exchanges were short lived, only about two or so years. We check on one another, and every couple months, it was clear he had grown afraid of me. Well, if you, I mean, I, I don't understand why you'd keep in co any contact with him if you were so you know, revolted by it. Um, I've warned several people over the years about him. You warned him, but you kept contact with him and were, pro were probably nice to his face. 
All right. So the 17 year old, I have sympathy for. She was a minor. She has to be protected by laws. Uh, this chick, I'm not so sure. I don't know. Maybe he got, maybe she was sending signals. Maybe she wasn't. I don't know. Maybe he's just forward. I don't know. I used to be supportive and kind of all those women that come forward in the coming weeks. And I guess I should say this too. <clears throat> let me, and let me go on record. Uh, me too came out a couple years ago, you know, and um, as we all know, Harvey Weinstein was a piece of shit and, you know, maybe it had to happen. Uh, but the, the mantra then was believe all women. Uh, let me just clearly state right now. I do not believe all women. Not after the last couple years. And I've seen guys trying to get railroaded. I potentially will believe, you know, women just let's, let's look into the facts. But if you just tell me, this is what happened. And I haven't heard anything from anybody else, including the guy that you're, you know, <laughs> indicting. I, I, I don't, I don't necessarily believe you and I'm sorry. And I think that's the way it should be. I need to gather more information. Yes. Too many guys have had their, their fucking lives ruined and they didn't. And some of these guys didn't even hit on a 17 year old. And, and, and let's, let's be clear here too. And again, I have to sort of defend Ed Piscor here. He was hitting on a 17-year-old, which is very creepy. But that's as far as it went. And it, was, it wasn't even in person. It was, you know, online. So, yes, he deserved some blowback. But um, the people that are on his side, as he would find out pretty soon, beginning with Molly Wright, um, don't have any compassion <laughs> at all. I only believe trans women because I only trust men. Hmm. <laughs> I had to travel a little bit for that one, but uh, you may be onto something there, Nick. <laughs> um, all right. So then we get um, <clears throat> Alex DeCampi, one of the worst women in the world. J just an awful, awful person. What an awful person. And what um, a looker, too. Yeah. <laughs> she, she's British, but British, but American. I don't know. She was born in Britain. A, a no talent hack. Okay. And she is part of what Penny Parker on Twitter, who does research into this, calls the Whisper Network. And by the way, guys, let me bring this back. There's no difference between Alex DeCampi. And Brian Yaksha, Patrick uh, Stewart, not Captain Patrick Stewart, but the RPG industry, Patrick Stewart, Olivia Hill, uh, Fiona Maeve Geist, they're all the same people. They live to exist in these little whisper networks, as we found out in Twatgate, and they only want to ruin people's lives. That is their sole goal. So like Olivia Hill is sort of like one of the big ones in RPGs, you know, that sort of whisper network, um, you know, very prominent in trying to uh, get Zach Sabbath, AKA Zach Smith canceled. And they did too. I mean, he's, he has no professional life now. This is the comics version. This is Alex DeCampi, a complete hack, no talent hanging around the industry has done a few things here and there, but, Nothing anybody would ever note. So here's her tweet. Now, she, this kind of just shows, and I'm sure this is just what's public, but everybody sort of knew, like, they were putting a whisper network together and putting subtle pressure on business relationships that Ed Piscor had to get him canceled. And he mentions this in his letter. So you can kind of see here, and... um this is what they were doing publicly. And maybe some of this was deserved. And look, there were folks like Ethan um, in, you know, in comics gate in general who were kind of chuckling at this, like, Oh, look at this guy. Who's, you know, kind of taking shots at us in the past. He's getting his now. So yeah. So we were laughing, but guess what? He, I think Ed Piscor probably knew folks like, you know, Comics Gate and people who are sympathetic to Comics Gate like us, we're gonna laugh. But that's all we were doing. 
we're just kind of chuckling amongst ourselves like oh look at this guy oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i don't know what do you think of these people ryan i think it's interesting <laughs> the worst I... the worst people in the world do you think uh, they're close um the fact that they keep exposing themselves and their primary motivation it's not money it's not even you know fame or infamy it's not recognition their primary motivation is somehow some way they're getting off with this cancellation stuff right yes. they get some sort of intrinsic pleasure ruining literally ruining lives sometimes arguably with some substantial evidence but most of the time without it yeah they are you know they're they're they may not be the worst but they're they're getting down to the icy levels of hell there's got to be you know in my, in my mind there's there's only a couple of crimes that like are just you can't really come back from I mean, you should, there should be a way back, you know, for people. And at some point, Ed Piscor should have been, it should have been made known to him. Like, all right, you, you got to serve your penance here. But yeah, oh, this, yeah. this, this, I will don't get, think this will Ed, get better. Ed clearly was behaving poorly at the least. Oh, and, yeah. and at the best, maybe had an eye for girls that were a little younger, which... Yep. Puts him at the how level. Old was, of how old these was people. he? He's like forty, uh, right? I, I don't remember. Forty-one. Yeah, I think he's in his early, early, like just forty or early forties. I think he, um, his infatuation with perhaps younger girls. If you look at his pictures, not like his drawings, but like pictures of himself, he comes across as a younger looking younger yeah. than he is. Yeah. yeah, and like I said, I you can't look. You just you can't. <laughs> Look, it's, you get, underage girls, you just you can't do it. No, uh, no. But I would say this: there, there's probably a lot of people who are sitting back and uh, saying, "Shame on you! How horrible! How horrible!" And then that night, they're going on the hub, and they're you know the first thing they're searching for is 18 year old girls or stepsister <laughs> or you know yeah. And yeah. it's like okay, well. Uh, look at the the beam in thine own eye you know so you know before you do you do that but still yeah there's like i said no no defending it and this is another one this is daryl ao another no talent hack um you know ed piscor is presumed uh, so they're here's what they, here's what i thought was funny they're trying to tie ed piscor to comics gate Ed Piscor, who, you know, hated Comic Comicsgate, you know, didn't didn't like Ethan Van Skyver or anybody else in Comicsgate. Ed Piscor's presumed alt Twitter is unlocked. And I don't think he he says that before he died, he said that he never had an alt account. But to hear these uh these brain dead idiots like Daryl Ayo and Alex DeCampi and all these morons in the Whisper Network. He's a fan of Ethan Van Skyver and Elon Musk, as you should have assumed. The person who is presumably Ed Piscor says that Ed Piscor is a victim of an attempt of an attempted lynching. Well, it's sort of what it into what it turned into. Um, yeah. So Daryl Ao, his sole accomplishment in life, I think, is being born black. I think that's Daryl Ao's sole accomplishment because he has done nothing of note and that's this is all he does now is he he cries racism all the time on twitter and well he's not on twitter anymore he's on what is it blue sky blue I think. sky yeah yeah, God, that, yeah. It's, it's, it's where all the dregs filtered to um but again it's just it's all like <sighs> these are these are the these are the worst people uh, in my opinion they just it's like in the Lord of the Rings, you know, he's like, what, when King Theoden said, you know, what, what can you do against such reckless hate? <laughs> and that's all these people trade in. Well, well here's the, the thing, thing, Double D. Why Ed Piscor is the target? Presumably on their own side. 
they're running out of stuff to do, but they can't get off of this high, you know, that yeah. dopamine hit of we got him, that they're eating their own. This because, is where I would encourage you to, to look back at the Twatgate article, and you do get some insights from those folks because they do say things like cancel or be canceled. Like this right, is the no, law of the land. I remember, and, you know, cheap plug, we had Jim on for his first statement when that was all breaking. Uh, I, I remember he, he sent me a, a text message uh, before any of it hit the Internet, and I said, well, shoot, we're recording Nerd Cognito tomorrow. You want to come on? Uh, and and he went through and said, you know, I've been saying this and I've seen it. And when it comes to finding a target, and I'm paraphrasing at this point, you know, uh, but it doesn't matter. A target is a target is a target. It's just yeah. fresh meat. So yeah, I mean, we we all know Grim Jim is is pretty liberal in a lot yeah. of things. I mean, the only thing we probably agree on is, you know, he's a he's a free speech absolutist more or less, um, as most of us are. You know, but they were look. They were going after Zach Smith, who's right. way more left sure. even than uh, Grim Jim. Um, but yeah, to your point, Ryan. Why? Why somebody on their own side? Why not? <laughs> it's just, it's just, it's just, it was the easy target. That's it. It's low hanging fruit. Yes, and it gives them that dopamine hit. And these are people profoundly untalented people profoundly untalented people and by the way speaking of talented people our guest ryan david look at that double yeah sure. that's that's called, at... that's called a professional segue mouse that is. yeah i, I, Just I don't released, know what uh... you've read on the wall double <laughs> team, but... <laughs> village of greenhaven uh tell us a little bit about village of greenhaven before we uh let, let's let's put a little uh a little bit of light in this darkness tell us about uh, the village of transition from ed piscor to the village of greenhaven uh, <laughs> yeah. um uh, village of greenhaven is sort of a a quickie little passion project that i threw together at the end of late last year and it uh launched at the beginning of this year um i was looking for something and this actually was spawned out of my table right i, I ended up originally just making a little forest town for my campaign mm -hmm. and it started to spiral and i said you know this is really good and i'm not running a D, D right now with that group i'm running a third party system and the way i do prep in the limited capacity that i do i said this could be something that could pop into anything and system agnostic stuff typically in the hobby gets a really bad rap right yeah. it, it it's it's stuff that is usually slapped together and so loose that you can't do anything with it so i said i'm just going to keep going on this path and make something that i think everybody can pop into a fantasy campaign and what what ended up being was the the village of green haven it is a completely system agnostic forest town that you can pop in no matter what you're running so there's you know no system specific statistics in it it is all what i call imagination fuel for the dungeon master it's got locations events uh random tables shops npcs and it's just for you to pick and choose what you want it is intentionally very out of character for something that you would think oh ryan david's writing something it's very light, very airy, very positive. <laughs> um, unlike this stuff, yeah. Un unlike the, you know what we're, we're talking Blow about. His picture up and get rid of that Ed Piscor stuff on our screen. Uh, yeah, that's probably a good idea. Oh, uh, um, Ed Piscor. Yeah, while well, I'm pitching Green Hay. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, let's. Uh... But but the point is, you can take this and go anywhere you want. So if you want light, fun, easy to run. You can have that if you want dark gritty and really really hardcore rpg town you can have that too obviously green haven in my town is not going to look the same as green haven in anyone else's town and that's by design so yep the second thing i did is i said well, i want this to be something that not only can go into any system but is affordable for anyone to use so I said, I'm not going to make any money with this thing and price the $2 di digital at $2.99. The actual yep. print copy is $6.99. Yep. 
So wow. everybody can put it into their table. If you can't find a way, or if you think that the style doesn't match with your game, maybe it's time for you to put the dice aside for a while and let someone take over the reins because it's truly built to pop into whatever you want. Um, what a great yeah. eclipse gift this would make. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> you could you could yourself. go outside and read it in special light. Uh, <laughs> this is this is like when Mouse worked at a grocery store and he priced like a bunch of steak for like what, 99, was, uh, 99 was, cents a it, pound. <laughs> it was uh, turkey breast. Oh, turkey breast, yeah. fresh, and it was ni- nineteen cents a pound. Where did it all go? You want Sold turkey out. breast? Oh, that's different. That's the Lakeside <laughs> Chapel. Um, I tried to make it as accessible and designed it with the table in mind from the dungeon master's perspective. And it has been incredibly well received. I was really ready to take bullets. Right. And people really, really liked it. Uh, so I, I couldn't be more humbled or proud by the feedback that I've received. Uh, it is on its way to Electrum, which still blows my mind on drive through RPG uh, because it is the first thing that I've published for money, uh, even though it's little money, um, it, it's just really uh, been well received by by our friends in the hobby, and uh, I couldn't be happier. Uh, there is uh, the next element in the Pop In Principles series. Greenhaven is very clearly a setting and stuff that happens and exists in that setting. The next one is going to be a quasi adventure. It's taking me a little longer because it too, I'm, I'm committed to this system agnostic thing. I want to bring that back uh, sort of a throwback to the days of, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the two E days where we saw all this great system agnostic stuff coming. Yes. Out. Um, Judges guild. This, and, the next, yeah. the next. Yeah. Yeah. The next element in the series is called Umber Hollow, and it is a decidedly dark adventure in contrast to the perceived bright and cheeriness of Greenhaven. But well, here's uh, some you can positive run them feedback from Alex Clark. Yeah, Greenhaven was a breath of fresh air to read. Almost too positive. <laughs> Keep up the good work. <laughs> you're too. You're too nice. Too nice. I've heard that a lot. We got another one too. Uh, Jeff Hatch. Yeah. Jeff Hatch asked how many pages. It's uh, forty-one pages, Jeff. That's a lot of bang for buck. Yeah. So congrats and well done, sir. Yep. It is. Uh, agreed. Yep. Thank you, James. I appreciate um, it. Yeah. So we'll, we'll touch again, but if you guys are interested, uh, I, I did put the link link should be in the description guys. Um, so if you want to check out guys, two ninety nine at least the PDF, if not the soft cover, good Lord, skip the Starbucks tomorrow and, um, help a brother out here <laughs> get a book right yeah, get a, get a, exactly get and get something book. you can use too that's actually useful because uh i mean I, I did uh i was an early um buyer and um yeah i mean i i really thought there was a lot of good useful stuff in there so um yeah well done yeah, you got it before drive through approved I it because i'm problematic right <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, funny funny story um when okay. the when it when I first launched it, um, you know, it goes through the standard thing, and I'm already approved to to release on drive through. But much like our friends, you know, Venger and Pundit and just about everybody else in our corner of the hobby, we all have to be manually reviewed before drive through puts us live. So oh, that takes usually three or four days, sometimes a week. Um, I happen to to launch it New Year's eve so i knew i had the holiday working against me uh when it finally went live on drive through that morning i was so excited i fat fingered on my tablet delisted it and then oh, when geez. i went to relist it again it got thrown back into review oh. <laughs> so nice <laughs> um uh, although kudos to drive through i did email them and they were really cool about it they said no we reviewed it once and they put it right back up so <laughs> i mean they do Look, we we all know what they did to Miguel and Sylvia, right? Our fr- our friends at Red Room. Although I think even by their own admission, they were they were they were pulling they were the, ti- the bear. They, yeah, they were poking the bear, pulling the tiger's tail. Uh, but they they do publish pundit. They p- publish uh, you know our friend Chris Chris Miller's stuff. Um, and by the way, he has a really good him and pundit have a really good game coming out, Baptism of Fire. Um, so I, I might um, I don't know if it's available yet. 
Um, not yet, but not yet. But not I, yet, I yeah. know it's eminently soon. Yeah, but pretty pretty soon, guys. I got a advanced copy, uh, just like a nice PDF, and boy, it looks really good. So um, yeah, but Greenhaven might make a good launch pad for a campaign. Yeah, you know, um, Greg uh, Gillespie always, you know, for like his mega dungeons, always says you need to have a safe haven within like a half day's march or a day's march from whatever dungeon you're in so they can have a safe place to kind of go back to and uh, recover, you know, buy things if they need it. Sounds like green Haven would be perfect for that. And it was designed to grow with the campaign too. So if you want, like in my mind's eye, it was a hub for a campaign. So as your right. characters progress, green Haven can grow with it. And that's sort of where, uh, you know, the, when the series becomes a series, when the next one comes out, uh, it's it's a sequel, but it's a standalone sequel. So you don't need one or the other, but that's where this one goes is, is it progresses yeah. down that road. So, yeah, it, interesting cool. stuff. And again, I'm humbled by all the wonderful stuff you guys are saying in the chat. Thank you so much. Yep. Well, good job. Yeah, we'll revisit that, um, you know, before we uh, before we go to. Um, all right. So, yeah, let's. Uh, Let's let's kind of bring this home. So Go yeah, back so to the, the good news, right? Yeah, let's yeah, let's step into the darkness once more. <laughs> yeah. So so we have uh, the Alex DeCampis, the Daryl Ayos, you know, of course these women that you know Ed foolishly you know tried to mess around with. You know, everybody's turning on him, and behind the scenes they're messing up his business deals. That's kind of what hurt the most. Um. And then the dagger came, and this is from Jim Rugg. In light of this past week's shocking revelations, I find it necessary to reevaluate my professional associations to ensure they align with my values of respect and integrity. Therefore, I have ended my working relationship with Ed Biscor. So this would be like if me and Mouse, like if, you know, I, I, somebody had said mouse had done something and I was like, sorry guys, no more mouse, except these guys did 1700 videos together. Right. Oh, wow. Years. They were daily, daily uploaders. I mean, they, and obviously they were, I mean, they were in studio together, kind of like me and uh, crazy mouse. Uh, they're friends in real life. So, yeah, so Matt, what, what would you do? Cause you know, crazy mice, crazy mouse and I are about as close as, you know, two guys can be. Uh, without being gay you know um, that's like um <laughs> the relationship between red and andy dufresne yeah yep they exactly called it i believe a platonic romance yeah between two that's men. a good way to yeah my hetero we'll call him my hetero life mate <laughs> um so how would you feel if i if I just that did. was a Shawshank Redemption. Yeah. If anybody didn't, know. Yes, yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> who's Red? And who's Andy? <laughs> so his best friend just dumped him. Yeah, publicly. Yeah. So he, if Ed's probably thinking, and you know, Dick Masterson. I'm sure we, we all, most of us know who Dick Masterson is, uh, who I kind of have a love hate relationship <laughs> with. I mean, he's he's pretty funny, but he's kind of annoying at times. Uh, but he's he's been kind of right on with this, and he posted this today. He's like. He basically said, like, this was the end right here. This had to be the end. And I sort of agree. When you get rid of, like, any hope of coming back and doing what you loved, which in Ed Piscor's case was talking about comics with your best friend, what do you do? You know, what do you do? You know, he's, as he kind of said in his note, he was already a pariah in his hometown. And that was thank thanks to a Pittsburgh station, uh, correct, uh, Ryan? Yeah, WTAE, uh, an ABC affiliate in Pittsburgh. Um, they did what the media does best. They got one of their reporters, uh, Mary Cipriani, I believe was her name. And I, it sounds like I know a lot about the, the Pittsburgh thing, but I can't tell you the last time I watched the news. Um, yeah, yeah. But, you know, she did what local blood and guts news reporters do and you know the logical course of action you know if you and i were reporters the first thing we would do is you know find the man's parents house and ring the doorbell incessantly for hours on end trying to get comments uh <laughs> yep. that 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 was the point where i said okay 
no love for presumably allegedly what Ed Piscor was into, but mom and dad in the equation, family in the equation, hounding friends, hounding family. Yes. Sort of putting the penance on anything that touched that man was just yep. horrible. So I truly, truly hope in the bottom and the cockles of my cold black heart that Cipriani and that station have a real, real crisis of conscience. I don't think it will happen. No, no, no. Yeah, no, no. But they've already, hope, moved right? on. they've already moved on to another. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> a a but, puppy's in a tree know, down the street. <laughs> and of the, the, the major networks that are within Pittsburgh, this 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 particular station is owned by a communications group, and this is you know stuff that probably nobody cares about. But it's Hearst Communications, which in the political spectrum of conglomerates that own TV stations, is closer to the middle than most. So imagine what could have happened if a oh, CBS yeah. or an NBC affiliate would have picked this. Yeah. Yeah, somebody really left left of center. Uh, James, two dollars <laughs> talking about Jim's Jim Ruggs, yeah, uh, disavowing of his friend. Oh God, dishonorable and betrayal. Yeah, that is a dishonorable betrayal. And it, to Ed Piscor's credit, he doesn't savage. He savages a lot of people at the end. <laughs> hey, you, Jim, hey. Jim, Jim's not one of them. He just, I think he just kind of says like this was. You could tell this took the air right out of them. <laughs> I mean, it's just, oh, that you know, was that was them pulling Jim's comments was the linchpin, right? Yeah. I, yeah, I think it's plain as day that everything else just accelerated what was going to happen. Yeah, and to your point before, just always remember no matter how much you hate the media, you don't hate it enough, right. <laughs> You you cannot hate the media enough. Um, yeah, just period. No need to go any further. Okay. All right. So, yeah, these people aren't capable. No, they're not. They're not. All right. So I'm gonna do something here. All right. So. This is Ed's final note. He posted this to Facebook and it was kind of dramatic because people started to get wind of it on Twitter. Like it was on April 1st <laughs> and people are like, no, this is not a joke. He just posted this to Facebook. So if you want to see, you want to hear, you know, the, the poignant, I would say this is a pretty poignant letter. And um, I don't know. I th I think it probably deserves to be read, just read into the record, sort of. He's sorry for being stupid. He says he never should have talked with Molly D. Molly D, of course, is the 17-year-old. Uh, the optics look dumb. He promises his innocence. Out of context, it looks terrible, but it was at the height of COVID. So he's kind of, uh, kind of excusing it a little bit. Um... <sighs> The way I noticed her was when she, she would like a bunch of my pictures at once. True. But, you know, you probably did see her in her school outfit. So, you know, obviously he's not going to. He just kind of says basically that he was dumb, but seeing someone younger representing R. Crumb and Gigi Allen gave me hope for the next generation. Curiosity killed the cartoonist. So this was everybody's like, uh oh. There's no way I'd, I'd have a 17 year old stay at my place. Maybe not 18 even. Well, this is what he's saying. I mean, you know, he was kind of seemed like he was kind of flirting with her. Anybody who saw the the messages themselves certainly was a little flirtatious, but here he's saying he had no he had no intention to do anything. I guess, you know, we'll have, obviously we'll never know. Um so you know, he, he basically just kind of more explaining what he was up to there. Um, for, he talks about the DMs being further out of context. And he says, Matt P at the Pittsburgh city paper, you know what you did to skew your narrative. Fuck you. 
but they surely gave themselves their own plausible deniability by asking me for comments right as I'm trying not to jump off a bridge. Now, this is Molly Wright. This is the one who he says asked, <laughs> you know, he asked her for a blowjob. He says that that's a conundrum and her actions border criminal. He said, she said, never looks good, but none of what she said happened. And I can't believe she'd be so malicious and pile on like this. So he's denying that. He's denying that he asked her for a BJ and all that other stuff. And I think that is the the point in this dialogue that that speaks volumes because he freely, you know, he smoke screened it a little bit because no one wants to say, yeah, I was hot for a 17 year old in a sure, schoolgirl's sure. outfit. But but he he admits I fucked up there. When it comes to oh, this yeah. one, he says unequivocally, yeah. no way. And and that was telling to me when I read it. Yep, yeah, for sure. For sure. Quick super chat, James, MVP of the night. 17 with probably twice that in body count. <laughs> Uh, nowadays, James, uh, yeah, unfortunately. <laughs> um, so yeah, um, he's he basically he's he's going after. He had nothing bad to say about the seventeen-year-old, and, and boy, I guess if you're going to go out and you know you kind of want to put the best foot forward doing so, that's the way to do it. You know, he had nothing bad to say about the seventeen-year-old, other than he thought he was his motives were mistaken. Well. I guess that's for everybody to decide. But this Molly Wright, he is, um, whew, he he does not mince words. Now that I'm officially checked out, I think my family <laughs> has a civil lawsuit and she should be held accountable. He wants her to be sued from beyond the grave. She pushed this over the edge into multiple women territory. It's so corny. I absolutely never asked for a BJ and trade for anything. She made me look stupid and everybody accepted her word as fact. Well, Ed, welcome to, you know, the world. Welcome to being a white man, especially a middle-aged white man in today's day and age. Uh, you you will never get the benefit of the doubt. So don't ever put yourself in these situations, guys. It's not going to end well. I never had anyone lined up for an open relationship. I was never interested in, a, we had sex twice and she initiated both times. Huh. I guess she'd, uh, she didn't uh, put that in her comment. Surprise. <laughs> exactly. Yep. Surprise. And again, guys, this is the man's last words. And he's being painfully honest, saying he he shouldn't shouldn't have done things. He was dumb. Now he's probably putting his own, you know, the best spin on everything, but I don't see why he'd lie about some of this stuff. Guess what? I'm believing him. So sorry, Molly. You can go fuck yourself. First time was a surprise, blah, blah, blah. She jumped on me. All right, so yeah, we don't need to get this. Thankfully, her post, including a, the piece about me dissing Jim Rugg, super emotional, fuck Ed Biscore type language and the Red Room sales stuff portray. She's a petty woman scorned. Ouch. Punitive and false. My house was burning and she threw gasoline on it. Damn. There needs to be recourse for my loved ones. I'm dead. Now everybody's reading this like, what <laughs> this is like this was all very dramatic uh were you following this live ryan when it was going on i was very close to live um yeah. like i said i wasn't right on it um but being here and just seeing it and reading it and the circles that are tangential to the ones that we run in in twitter and online they were mm -hmm. just on fire with it so yeah. Uh, I wasn't front lines, but I was just yeah. sitting back and watching. Yep. Yeah, I, I think I first learned about it with Ethan. Um, EVS uh, tweeted it out. And, you know, Ethan was one of the ones who was kind of like laughing at Ed, you know, because like I said, Ed was no friend of Comicsgate. Oh. But, you know, he, but look, <laughs> I got news for you. And, and people did try to try to make this connection. There ain't nobody in Comicsgate mentioned in this letter. <laughs> Not a one. <laughs> Yeah, so he's, he's, boy, he is very, he wrote, he devoted a whole paragraph. Hold Molly Wright accountable, please. Reputation destruction is her form of aggression, and there were very real consequences. My lawyer is Harris Miller. Is it possible to subpoena all texts and DMs I had with her? This is like nuclear grade revenge from beyond the grave. And this, this Molly Wright, she should be, look, he had to face the music. So if she's going to lie 
and besmirch someone just to get a little internet clout, bring it on. Let the chips fall where they may. Big titty taff. I don't know what this refers to. Yeah, I would draw you naked all day and never apologize for wanting to. I like drawing tits and tattoos when I'm not drawing comics. Solitary guy. Put every ounce of my time and life into my work around the past 20 years. Damn. Everybody's just kind of kind of going on, reminiscing here. Social media, my great relationship. He's talking about a, a relationship he had with a girl that that was good but ended amicably. And this, like I said, when, when I say this stuff's poignant and it's worth documenting, I never, you know, this is to that girl. <clears throat> so now it's all gone. Art show evaporated. How was, did he pass away? Um, I mean, the suicide, but I think it was maybe, was it like a gunshot? Do you know? I, I don't know. All I know yeah, is I don't he either. took his life. Yeah. Because on the I'm I'm reading ahead and it just says I'm sorry to my family for making such a yeah. mess. No pun intended. Yeah. Yeah. I'm I'm gonna guess it was gunshot. He was about to sign a 75k deal for switchblade shorties uh, with Abrams. Cartoonist kayfabe ends with Jimmy's shocking revelation statement. Those words hurt. And I'm, you know, if you have to read between the lines, that was if he was if he was on the fence before, he was probably like, okay, well. I have no friends in this life any longer. I'm a disappointment to everybody who liked me. Pariah. He did talk about some people who came over. And even, credit to him, he even shouts out Jim Rugg, who he did come over at some point, you know, during this time and gave him a hug and, you know, said, you know, but that didn't stop Jim from ending things. Yeah, and as you said, Mouse, sorry for making such a mess. That's why I think he shot himself. Um, I knew I wasn't going to be able to survive this. Comics is beyond a profession to me. It's everything. That might sound sad and pathetic to some, but this culture medium gave me the greatest joy in life. So this would be like if gaming was, you know, taken away from a lot of us. Oof. It was super dumb chatting with Molly D., my intentions were never nefarious with her or anybody. I'm doing it out of intense shame. We're not built to have hundreds of people judging and harassing us at once. A private and solitary mind can't take it. So this is where we come back kind of full circle. There were so many people out there waiting in the wings for something like this to emerge. Daryl A.O. Braithwaite called it a kill shot. He did on social media. Well, you all got your wish. You were waiting for something to blow out of proportion. It got served to you on a silver platter. Ramon Villalobos, Cam Del Rosario, JB Rowe, Molly Wright, congratulations. You got your pound of flesh. Evan Dorkin, I hope skeletons from your closet get revealed someday. Alex DeCampi, I love this one. Alex DeCampi, may you continue to have zero success no matter how hard you continuously leverage other people's business from your bully pulpit. Ouch. Yeah, so then it's just kind of family stuff. He took he took very, you know, good care to kind of put everything in order. Don't don't kill yourself, but good lord. I mean, if if you're gonna do it, I mean, he he, t he took care of everything. Well, well, that just speaks to the level of madness that this stupidity drove him to. Because this wasn't a spur of the moment decision, clearly, right? No. When no. you can organize those thoughts to that level, I mean, we've all had low points before. Oh, yeah. But when you yeah. organize the thoughts to that level and it becomes reality that you are putting together your final plans and you still go through with it, that's a level of torment that I don't, you know, Ed Piscor yeah. very clearly politically is not aligned with us, but I don't wish this fate on anybody. No. And, and that no. level of torment that was brought by presumably his own people, that just speaks volumes. It does. And it, to show you how evil these people, like this is Daryl Ayo already, like this is like today. He's already deflecting on Twitter. Well, you were named in a suicide note. Like, okay, a vindictive racist. Okay, so now Ed Piscor is a racist. Uh, now he's a racist, right? Yeah. 
you you piece of shit. Let me tell you something, Daryl Ao. If you ever try to take yourself yourself out, put me in your letter because I will wear that as a badge of honor. You sack of shit. You piece of human garbage. A vindictive racist who always was weird about black people tried to take one black person down with him. He drew a fucking series of comic books about the origin of hip hop. I mean, if you look at the way he looked, I mean, he, he dressed like a, a hip hop guy. He, he loved that culture. This sack of shit, Daryl Ayo. Fuck you. Um, this is one of the people, uh, Villa, whatever is it, Villa Lobos. He's taking a more som- somber approach, you know, kind of just saying how, you know, th- this is the way it sh- you should be. And of course, Alex DeCampi is just ignoring it, talking about going to, san diego comic-con and then all the all these the fucking whisper network allies uh let's not talk about the people in the letter we know we're not going to talk about any victim blame already all these usual suspect joe glass this lunatic joe glass you know who that is is that the Mike Tyson? I know. <laughs> say we fought him before <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> joe <laughs> glass isn't that Jan Brady's imaginary boyfriend on the Brady Bunch. Oh, no, is it? <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna defer to you there. I mean, he's he's also a lunatic, uh, gay comic book artist who is uh, always begging for uh, handouts. And he knows Jan Brady. Yes, <laughs> Joe Glass. But yeah, it's it's almost gee, it's almost like it was um, coordinated, Ryan. The, I can't, literally can't the day imagine after. that. Right? Yeah, could could you imagine something? I mean, god, these people wouldn't do this. Yeah. Trying to literally blame everybody else. Uh, victim blaming, victim. We're not blaming the victims, we're blaming on the pieces of shit. You know, like that that Molly chick, not the original Molly chick. Um, but even the Molly chick kept her damn mouth shut. Ao yeah. gloated and yeah. doubled down on bullshit that a dead man can't defend. Yep. That's why he, he is a sag. Oh, oh boy. And yeah, here's the, here's the queen fat ass herself. Ren famous, good old Lauren. Anyone in comic space right now using the phrase mob mentality is not a safe person and everyone should be taking note in response to it. Again, one of the worst, I mean, she's right up there with Daryl Ao and uh, Alex DeCampi. <laughs> and of course, uh, the, the dog washer, Vicky, who was trying to call people out. And then it got revealed that Vicky was, um, was proud of the fact that she almost trolled Martina Marcota to the brink of suicide. Everybody's like, are you kidding me? God. Of course, Vito's. The problem with Vito is he's got too much baggage of his own, so he was trying to defend it, but... Oh, boy. Hmm. I guess that's a good segue. Daniel D. Fox. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. That's two We're... killer segues. <laughs> um... I've been busy, Double D. I've been busy. Yeah, Yeah. this is what demons do. Exactly, Uh, James. Thank you very much. Yeah, these these people are. They are. um, That's yep. (laughs) That's all the. Yeah, we 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 ought to give that uh, handgun a uh, arrest for the rest, especially after we found Uh, out. I didn't mean it that way. That's my bad. That's not how I meant it. Hey, he's gone. Uh, so yeah, so that's that sums up the sad tale of Ed Piscor. Um, not a. Not a hero by any stretch, but didn't deserve this. People shouldn't, this shouldn't happen to people. And it's one thing to point and laugh, you know, especially if you're on the opposite side of him and say, no, I would, yeah, ha ha, you know. It's quite another to be, quote unquote, a friend of his and then just sort of work to destroy him, fuck up business relationships. And then, like he said, basically make it so he can't show himself in his own town anymore. And, you know, it's, what happens so um he had the guts to go ahead and do it and um it's unfortunate because his parents are still around um and it kind of left them you know with a hole in their life and a sister you know the rest of their lives obviously so nothing nobody wins here nobody wins suicide's such a an odd topic you know, I've had suicide in my my family, and uh, he said he was going to do it just kind of like how Ed did, and no one kind of took him serious. But 
it was about 20 some years ago. It's just so it leaves a lot of pieces to pick up for others. Yep. So for that aspect, it's hard. But then when you look at from another point of view, like if Ed didn't want to be here anymore and he just was like, I'm checked out, I'm done. The love of my life, which is comicking, is over. Why are we so selfish to tell him, oh, no, you stick with it every day and be depressed beyond belief? Yep. You know, it's it's such a fine line there. Yep. And it can be a hot topic one way or another. And I'm not taking a side or anything. I just think that sometimes we look at it from the point of view of the destruction you leave behind. But then from that point of view that we have, it's the selfishness in ourselves that say, we still want you around. And the other person is like, but I don't want to be around. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they, they ultimately have, you know, the agency to do it. it. It does leave a hole in other people's lives. So, you know, you do have to think long and hard because the people who are going to miss you the most are the ones that were the closest to you. But, but yeah, I mean, he obviously, well, he's, basically said he wasn't strong enough to to do this. Now me? I mean, you're going to have to drag me out. I mean, I, I'd have just fucking moved to Thailand or something. <laughs> you know what? I'd have sold everything and, you know, just done something, you know, go literally across the world, you know? And restart. Yeah, just fucking restart. Come back five years later. Oh, weren't you the guy that hit on the 17-year-old? Nah, that was a lie. Fuck you. I'm back. They wouldn't even remember. Yeah. No way. People love a comeback. That's right. <laughs> they do. Seriously. Don't yeah, call like, it a comeback. Weren't you? Yeah. yeah that's right, LL that's right. made yeah, a whole. Don't, yeah. Don't but call. like, are you the guy that did that? I did. I got my life together. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. I'm restarting. Oh, my gosh. You know. Well, sure. So -and -so Everybody loves the redemption and... story, Mouse. Absolutely. That yep. That's how I would spin it. Uh, and that and full disclosure and honesty. I'm too big of a puss to do it. Right. <laughs> I've. Yep. You know, we've all I, had I probably really too. Yeah. low points in our life. There's no way. And and maybe it's I'm too selfish, as in I enjoy life even when I'm in my low points. Yeah. That I can't do that. But I, I like I can't put myself in someone else's shoes when they're at that sort of level. And agreed. Yeah. And but like we said, Ed planned this out, you know, like took care of his things everything you know yeah. so like i don't know if it's courage is the right word but like the courage to go through with it takes balls you know takes double balls. d you can touch that one i'm not touching that one from james <laughs> <laughs> thank you james two dollars super chat <laughs> that's the right way to do it double d <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> Oh, James uh, knows. James knows. Jeff Hatch Thank just you. typed in Robert Downey. I mean, he didn't do quite what yeah. he did, but yeah, comeback story. I'll tell you who did what he did. Rob Lowe. Yeah. 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 I forgot about that. Holy shit, I forgot about that. And everyone it, loves Rob Lowe. Yeah. And not for nothing, Rob Lowe still looks like 10 movie stars, man. <laughs> I yeah. want to be, I want to be Rob Lowe, <laughs> just, yeah. just visually, because that man did not age. But, but then on the other side... R. Kelly. <laughs> yeah. Oh. And everybody hates R. Kelly. Yeah. But like Rob Lowe, redemption story. The, the thing is, they're just, there seems to be, it's kind of weird because especially the left uses it the way they want to. Like they'll go after someone like an Ed Piscor. Okay. But they will, uh, but they will call Pardos, if you know what I mean, uh, maps, minor attracted people. So it's like they, they like to play both sides. They, they want to excoriate somebody for it, but societally, because they just want to watch kind of the world fall apart, they will happily promote an agenda and be like, oh, no, there's nothing really wrong with this person. Uh, it's, it's the most bizarre thing ever. Um, Before you go any further, uh, Nick, I got that reference about Kim Kardashian, by the way. I know what you're talking about. That's a, <laughs> that's a good one. Go on. <laughs> yeah, I forgot that Rob Lowe did it at the uh, the DNC. Yeah, boy, we're showing our age here, people. Um, <laughs> all right, well, let's uh, let's move on to uh, 
Lizzo will find redemption at Golden Corral. <laughs> what Lizzo do? Didn't she quit and then came back or something? I don't know. She shot her shot with some NBA player and he was very polite and rejected her. And I haven't heard from Lizzo. I don't want to say since then, but like she just she just like quit or like said she was going to quit and then everybody was like fine or something. I don't know. She was in the news. Uh, Mrs. D was trying to tell me and Unfortunately, like some th some things, I was concentrating on something else, so I was doing a lot of uh huh. Oh yeah, that's too <laughs> well, that's bad. That's easy to do with Lizzo. Right? Yeah. Damn, I hear Lizzo and I immediately glaze over. Yeah, yeah, Double D just. I told a story the other day, and Mrs. Mouse was like, "Huh? What? Huh?" And Double D just sat there. And, Shame on me. Yeah, yes. Okay. <laughs> you, but yeah, you do understand. You know, Mrs. D talks a lot. Oh, I got a. <laughs> She's a talk. I got yeah. one of those ramp scoop catchers. You know, I catch about eighty-five percent of what she says. You know, fifteen percent sometimes slips. You're through. a talker. Talkers <laughs> make me thirsty. Yeah. I'll have two chickens. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she quit and then backed out. Jeff Hatch. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Lizzo. When she backed Lizzo out, it went beep beep beep. So beep, there you go. Beep, beep, when she sits yep. around the house. <laughs> Hey, -oo. um, I don't know. Um, all right. So let's, uh, let's talk about Daniel D Fox. So if you guys don't know, um, now which uh, show was this on, um, on YouTube? It was we, on your podcast on yeah, Cognito. It, it was a special episode of the podcast that we recorded video for because fuck it was Daniel D Fox. Why wouldn't we? Right. Um, uh, so yep. we simul released it is that a word simul release uh we, we dropped yeah. the podcast as usual yesterday morning uh somewhere between eight and ten o'clock after coffee kicks in and mm -hmm. last night we did a youtube premiere of the video version of it so if you want to listen to it in your car get the podcast if you want to see my ugly face <laughs> watch it You're on a YouTube. striking individual we're seeing um, it right now we love no, it i know right <laughs> Remember, just remember, like two, three years ago, I said, I'm never going to be on YouTube. No, it's always going to be audio. Anyway, uh, here I am. Uh, but no, uh, it's the same show, two places. Okay. Um, so, Daniel yeah. D. Fox, for those of you that don't, don't remember. Okay. All right, so... First of all, we may watch it like a clip or two, but I want you, I do want you guys to watch this interview because as we all know, as you of course can see right now, Ryan is a professional and uh, he, Again, he did a I great laugh. job. <laughs> yeah, him and him and Kyle did a great job uh, interviewing someone who I never thought would be in our sphere. Yeah. Yo mama jokes. <laughs> <laughs> yo mama jokes are coming in. <laughs> we put on secret. It told on her. <laughs> yeah. Keep them coming. Keep them coming. We'll they were so in. good. I mean, I, before we get into Daniel Fox with your mama jokes, <laughs> I remember we would sit around the lunch table at school and just keep going. And whoever dropped the ball had to buy Mickey D's after school. So if you could oh. come up with one right you like better. that, yeah, you were buying, you were buying snacks, Damn. big Macs. They were not ten dollars and twenty dollars an hour. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> that that got released on April Fool's Day as well. The twenty dollar an hour law in California. Yeah, yeah. first Why thing not? Pizza Everything Hut did was California is a joke. Yeah. So, first thing Pizza Hut did was lay off all its delivery drivers. <laughs> Jeez, do they just go into like Instacart or, or I mean, uh, DoorDash. you can get it from DoorDash, yeah. DoorDash now. Yeah, congratulations. You just took yeah. all these people. You got to care for what you wish for with these $20 an hour jobs. Yeah. So now guys that were probably making over or at least 20, you know, with tips and all that are now making $0 an hour. Right? Yep. That's the true minimum wage. The true minimum yes. wage, no matter yep. what number you put on it, is going to be $0 per hour. Yeah. Yeah. This is what happens when you elect brain dead idiots like California does. You have. You know, bubble-headed morons like Gavin Newsom, and I mean, I mean, it's not like there aren't Republicans out there. It's just because, like, all those like counties outside, like Los Angeles and San Francisco, they're all red, but it's like there's not a lot of people in them. So Los Angeles and California drive the bus, San right. Diego to some extent. Um, yeah, 
So it's like, well, you get what you deserve. <laughs> Your mama breasts so bad. I didn't know whether to give her a mint or a roll of toilet paper. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> So fat she gave Dracula diabetes. Yep. <laughs> Yo, mama jokes. I love them. All right. So, like I said, um, yeah. <laughs> I, about, I, I, I'll just keep going with you. Mama. That, that'll be the Teeth third so hour. Yellow, right? She spits <laughs> butter. Uh, there's no, there's no auto enrolling tonight. There'll be just an hour yeah. of Yo, mama. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so Daniel Fox, um, I got in a, a bit of a tussle with because he did this tweet. And this is when, uh, was this the, the gay wedding cake? Yep. Was that when this was? Yeah, I, th- I think so, yeah. So basically, I can now ask someone what their politics are at checkout on my website. And if they answer conservative, remember Daniel Fox does Zweihander, the RPG, I can refuse to let them buy my TTRPG books. My religion believes discriminating against conservatives is fine. Okay, that's fine. So he uh, released that, and I said, hmm. So I said, well, that's... That's content for a video. Now, contrary to what Daniel believes, that did not launch my channel. Channel. I think he's a, he's because <laughs> I did watch your interview. It was very good. But yeah, he's like, oh, he got a lot of mileage. He started his channel with that. No, not quite, Daniel. In fact, that's really I think may, other than maybe in a live stream, you were mentioned a couple times. Other than that one video, that that was my only problem with you. And you know, all I was saying was, well, this is how this person feels about conservatives. If you're conservative. Do you want to buy Zweihander? Let me know in the comments below. Like and subscribe. <laughs> you know, that was my pretty much my interactions with Daniel. But he didn't mention this, but I think that did sort of kick up a bit of a shitstorm around it. And he did something very curious afterwards, right? He uh, nuked his Twitter account. And um, I was like, huh, it's only business now. So I was like, all right. And that's why I have never really mentioned him since because I got no beef with the guy. I didn't, it wasn't even like personal with him. It was personal in one regard. And I'm telling you, I would not hesitate to talk to him, but he would have to answer this before we went any further because when i released that video he filed a privacy complaint i've only ever had like one complaint ever filed on any of my videos he filed a privacy complaint and i I can only think it was because i screen capped his that tweet i just showed this one because that was really the only thing i don't obviously i never dox people or anything like that and daniel had a reputation for doxing people and i know you covered that um so he must kind of sort of live a little bit in that realm where he thinks that stuff is fair game. Now, obviously, YouTube, you know, didn't do anything with it. They right. realized it was stupid. So he would have to answer for that. And I would, I don't, I'm not saying I would need an apology, but I would at least, at least need an admission that it was a little bit below the belt to do something like that. And other than I, that, I was fine because I, quite frankly, listening to him, I'm like, yeah, you know, disagree with him on politically on everything, but seems like a guy I could talk with, game with, right? I thought he was very polished. And very practiced. Now, um, people say that, you know, we softballed. I don't think we softballed, but. uh, Especially you, you, you called him out and you, you many times said, I'm having a hard time here, Daniel. Yeah. And specifically with the conservative tweet, because we followed it up with, uh, it was sort of a, a, a follow-up tweet that was from one of his writers that echoed the exact same sentiment and spoke for Zweihander. And I said, look, you know, uh, his his explanation for that was that was a joke. It was a poor joke, yeah. but it was a joke. He did say that he regretted making the tweet, which yeah. I think is probably accurate. Which he should have um, said at first. He shouldn't have bothered because I, as I was <laughs> listening to it, I'm like, he's saying it's a joke. And then later he says, oh, let me just say it was a really bad idea. I shouldn't have done it. It's like, well, just admit it. Like you, you meant it. I can I can you know, believe that, you know, like, all right, you know, you're very liberal, you know, like that's Dan fine. You were, you were making a point, but is a very smart guy that is a marketer by trade. And I mm. went in knowing that and feeling that throughout the entire interview. Now I, I'm not, I, I have nothing bad to say. He answered almost every question. 
Uh, he did sort of skirt the was this a behind the scenes Weihander conversation about conservatives. But again, I wasn't there to skewer the guy. I wanted to have a conversation. Right. And as hokey as this sounds, there is such fragmentation in this hobby that if we can get to a point where an a-hole like me can sit down and have a solid and relatively open conversation with Daniel D. Fox, that's only good for the hobby. I yeah. may not have sold a single copy of Zweihander, and I told him off the air before we started, with this audience, you're gonna you're not selling any books. Yeah. So if yeah, that's exactly. your motivation, tell me now because it's not gonna happen. And yeah. and and I think he knew it too. What I perceive is he legitimately wanted to take a step to the side from politics. To his credit, he has his beliefs, and he didn't abandon his beliefs, nor did I yep. during the interview. But he wanted to take a step to the side and focus on where there was commonality, which uh, I think is probably the biggest positive that came out of, uh, of the meeting. Yeah. I, I don't have any angst towards him. I think that he, like I said, the one thing that I took away is he is a dangerously smart person. And yeah, he's crazy, uh, definitely crafty and polished. You, you had, you, you, you got that right. Um, for, yeah, for sure. it's, it's, I, would I have a conversation with him? Sure. Would I game with him? Sure. Would he have to do it without a session zero? You better fucking believe it at my table. <laughs> no need. But, but as yep. long as, as that's out in the open and as long as that polish wasn't a facade, I'm okay with the final result of the interview. Are we going to be BFFs going out for a beer? Probably not, but right. we can coexist to an extent. Yeah. And, and we can and, talk, can talk to each other. Right. And that's yeah. huge. That's huge. Yeah. And, and people, you know, look, uh, obviously I have a reputation as being a flamethrower. Uh, if Daniel Fox wanted to talk, as long as we address that, privacy complaint because i i can't let that go because that pissed me off because as bad as like look you just you you don't do that and i know he's not a youtuber okay but he right. should know better especially being in there let's like as as jake giddy said you know i wouldn't do that to my worst enemy um even like someone like indestructo boy you know who has actually tried to f with my channel he's a he's a sack of shit too and that's why he will live in infamy in my intro from now on um <laughs> But still, I would never mess with his channel. I wouldn't false flag it or, you know, lodge complaints against it. That's just bitch made bullshit. You know, it's kind of it's like it's like our code as as YouTubers. We, you don't do that stuff. Yeah, you don't F with someone else's. I, I said it in the interview, you know, the the strife in the hobby and even bigger on YouTube. We're fighting for water, but we're in the ocean, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for it, sure. It's, That's a good way it's to put ridiculous. It. Um, I, I, I don't know. I, I, I mean, it's, after talking to him, though, Double D, I really don't see that from his perspective. If I'm gonna try to put myself in his headspace, I don't see it as an attack on your channel from his perspective. Now, obviously, I, I do, mm -hmm. right? Uh, yeah, yeah. But from Getting his perspective, his head, again, yeah. he is a marketer. He is trying to eliminate negative marketing for his yep. product so it wasn't uh i'm going after double d it was uh i want to take some of the shade off of zweihander uh yeah, and, that's, then, a, and that's, that's just a good my reading of it speculation yep. no that's right? that's probably a good reading of it i'm sure that's kind of how he thought of it which just proved at the time i think that's it's probably changed a little now he didn't just didn't had no self-awareness that he put himself in this position and that i look if you go back and watch that video I wasn't saying don't buy Zweihander. Like, I don't really do that kind of stuff. Well, that's how I, we got the interview. I did say that. I posted it. And then Kyle posted something similar, too. And Because okay. Daniel D. Fox does not do interviews, period. Mm -hmm. They are few and far between, um, especially outside of his own circle, right? Uh, he has his, right. his, his buddies, most of which have blocked me and Nerd Cognito. What up, Will? <laughs> Uh, <laughs> uh, but the truth is he doesn't do interviews. And so if I would have passed on this opportunity, 
I don't think that our corner of the hobby would have this extra glimpse. And I did a lot of research going into it too. To his credit, most of the most egregious stuff is hearsay. Whether those stories are true or not, we'll never know. But the stuff right. where there were documented receipts from his words, from his actions, and the stuff that he actually openly admitted in the video, it was very, for as polished as he was, I think that he was as honest as he could allow himself to be. And in, in that situation, knowing the persona that is Daniel D. Fox, I'll take that as a win. Yeah. Yeah. I was glad you sat down with him. Um, I think we can't, we should never be, we, we really are, would be worse than the people that we claim, you know, to hate if we didn't at least open the door when somebody's willing to talk with us and be like, all right, let's, let's try to find some to, common ground. Yeah. Yeah. And Even unfortunately it's not disagree. reciprocal. Yeah. Uh, you know, they yep. won't do that. And I don't, I often question, is it a good thing that we are willing to do that? But I can't compromise that I want to have that conversation because, hey, if you're completely dead wrong, I at least want to laugh at it, you know? <laughs> I think there's a line to be drawn. You know, there's, look, there's, there's nothing to be gained by talking, you know, to like an Olivia Hill or a Fiona Maeve Geist or, you know, you know, uh, an Alex DeCampi or a Daryl Ayo. If it, if it can but, be done without it getting vitriolic, it's going to be entertaining at yeah, the least. Yeah. I, I just, I could never talk with those people because I know just how black their heart is. Now I never, you know, to my credit, I mean, I, I never thought, I just thought Daniel Fox was kind of like a political lunatic. And, you know, for a while I thought that. And then when they, I, I will say, I, I was kind of reading between the lines. Of course, I was kind of gloating at first when he took down his Twitter because I'm like, well, I'm, I'm at least partly responsible for this. And I still right. believe I am a little bit. And if that's the case, by the way, he owes me a debt of gratitude because he said it was one of the best things that happened to him, didn't he? <laughs> like yeah, him he said being out off of Twitter is, 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 a, is a weight lifted from him. Yeah. So. I guess he, he passed that curse to me. Now I'm, now I'm on Twitter all the time, but um, so yeah. Um, yeah. So I, I would definitely talk with someone like Daniel. Um, there probably are some people I wouldn't, but he's one, one I would. And as long as you stick to your principles and don't give in and go like, Oh, well, you know what? Yeah. Session zero is a good idea or, you know, safety tools are a great idea. Um, you know, you can have a conversation like Crazy Mouse said, even if it's just, you know, to agree to disagree, right? Yeah. I'm trying. There we go. Get stuck on you. Ooh, Jeff Hatch. Thank you, Jeff. Yeah, $5. By the way, I saw the Dungeon Dudes at GaryCon. They had a don't talk to us attitude. Not at all like their friendly YouTube personalities. Yeah, I could see that. I could definitely see that. But bunch of fucking Eddie Haskells. Nelly old how you yeah how you doing uh mrs uh cleaver and when she turns around shut up squirt bam yeah right in the kisser <laughs> yeah right in the shoulder um you dungeon dudes yeah i don't yeah those don't just don't like them you know just not anything personal um just phonies um in fact i would even put them a little bit below bob like bob the world builder Bob, I'm, I'm sort of always fascinated with. I'm anxious for his next trip to Seattle. <laughs> yeah, that was that was around last it's last be, year at this it's time. Got to be the it? anniversary of that coming up. <laughs> we were dissecting that. It does seem like there's uh, we're in a lull in uh, RPG news, doesn't it, Ryan? We are. We, we it's been a drought. Wizards has finally learned to keep their gosh darn mouth shut. <laughs> so yep. and and they're focused primarily on doing preemptive damage control for whatever they're going to finally call uh one D and D D and D six E, whatever it is. Um, yeah. yeah, for sure. <sighs> Bob's I'm cat sure... or wife named grace. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's his, uh, it's his woman, but yeah. We're... <laughs> Cause someone just wrote Bob's a cock. <laughs> Bob's a cock. Uh, he's, he's another one that I'd, I'd love, I'd love to talk to Bob. Man. So would he, I, he, he'd probably, he probably hates, you know, probably hates us, but no, uh, I don't know why. Yeah. Uh, we, <laughs> I remember, uh, God, I think Charlotte made a, uh, made a pretty funny joke about, uh, Grace and who she was. I got, I miss Charlotte. Uh, so do I. Yeah. Charlotte, if you're out there, honey, 
let us know you're alive. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Like you said, Ryan, it is, it is a lull because wizard of the coast is actually being smart, smart for once, give them props, right. Give them props for that. Um, I I do. And in, even on a bigger scale, Hasbro, uh, to some extent is being relatively smart. Um, they are skewering the AI beast before anyone even knows that it's come like everyone knows it's coming mm-hmm. it is what it is we're not going to be able to put this genie back in the bottle but they have a clear plan and they are just laying the groundwork and the bobbleheads and titty streamers are just going oh right along with it and th- mm-hmm. so they don't realize that they're getting set up to take the fall because if they align against the product wizards is going to cut off that favored status so um, yep. everything that they're doing from a business perspective is really smart. Do I like it? No, I want Dungeons and Dragons back. I want to love that property again. I've had the bitter pill to swallow and it's been over the last six months that I've had the realization that it's probably not going to come back in my lifetime. And, uh, it's tough. Well, so I can just sit back and watch and hope and contribute to the folks and to the part of the hobby that does mean something. And, and that's, that's why we're all here. Right. Well, well Ryan, there's... unless there's a redemption story for dungeons and dragons. Oh yeah. There you go. Yeah. It's going to come with a new custodian. That's not Hasbro. That's the only it, way that it can be saved. It has to be reborn from the ashes at this If point. you think about it, I mean, in the next year or so would be the perfect time to shop it. Right. It Sell sure it is at a high. And I've been singing this conspiracy theory for a long time. And even folks on our side thought I was nuts when I first said it. But Hasbro has been systematically knocking down the book valuation of D&D because it's too expensive right now. No one can pay what it's worth, so to speak. So is, you know, Kyle Brink the useful idiot for them? Kinda, mm, maybe. Kinda, yeah. Because once that valuation gets down to a saleable point, they might be able to unload it. Yeah, I don't know. I'm getting I, out the aluminum foil now. I think. I mean, I think it's like, hey, this is a valuable property. Look, we're launching a new edition. You know, you could, you, you might be able to con somebody into. There's thinking also, like, oh, there's a lot of long-term value here. Yeah, and they're it's doing really, moves. It's really, it's a hot potato, but. They're doing moves that, that are tells for that too. You know, supposedly all of this 1D&D 6E stuff was in the can months ago, and then they keep making releases and pushing back release dates. So it's almost saying like, hey, look, here is the bones. Here is the structure of this property. It can be yours to finish and publish. But supposedly, a long time ago, it was already done, right? When they announced the public play test, it was a done deal. All of the, the, the hard bits and pieces were in place. The mortar was set, and we're just fine-tuning. And now we're back at a place where, oh, no, 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 no. We have ideas, and we're going we're gonna to push this out. There, it, it's, it's a juicy steak on a plate that can be shopped. If you look we found at a, we right found a couple of plus one modifiers we can throw. <laughs> yeah. That's all the plates. At. It's like you're looking at it. It's, that's all it was. It's just a, a little bit of a window dressing here and there because they didn't want to, you know, screw up what they think is a gravy train and may still be of the 5e. Right. As I've said b- before, I mean, this not innovating anything could be very it's a very risky strategy i'm not saying it's not going to work i'm not of the mind that it's going to be a complete dud sales wise right out of the gate it may do well it'll do okay it'll make the numbers and they've priced it interestingly look it's it's like i'm teaching economics 101 again (laughs) their price points for it are set so that they can't lose you know they're There's a position with your audience where you have capture of the casuals. Well, they've lost that a long time ago. And then there's capturing of the fans and you get about 50% capture rate. If you're doing a really good job on each of these subgroups and that group has fallen out now, just look at their last 
seven book releases. Like I, I'm not yeah. talking out my ass. This is from numbers. Oh, they yeah. are they're I've left. They're mm-hmm. left with the group that will buy everything and anything, and that group exists in every fandom, right? From I mean, look, pro wrestling most closely parallels what we're seeing here because that fandom is also left with only that group of people that will buy absolutely everything. Uh, Dungeons and Dragons, from a business perspective, is left with the same subgroup of fans. They may not be the same fans, but it's the fans that will buy anything at at that price point. That's why you can price a deck of many things book at a hundred bucks. Because they're only expecting to sell to this portion of the yeah. audience. The fewer, D&D yeah, fewer stuff units. that's coming out for, uh, yeah, the, the FLGSs are being presented now with an exclusivity deal that they can get distribution direct from Hasbro and exclusively provide Dungeons & Dragons products to beat Street Date. But the catch is the product that they're selling is a digital slash print hybrid you can't just buy the book you have to buy the combo so who knows who knows i think that hasbro has cleaned house and gutted the balance sheet to the point where they're absolutely totally sustainable there was this this run about two months ago where everyone was cheering you know oh they're in such financial peril and i sat back and said they're not in any peril at all they're actually in really good shape their so. stock's gone up in the last three months. Yep. Yeah. 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 I went. And I, I went through their year-end financials and look. I'm. You know, I have a CPA background, and um, there, there were concerning things, but they were mainly things, stupid decisions made prior that they're kind of still paying the price for. Um, so it wasn't right. a real. It wasn't like a clean set of financials, as we would say. But it wasn't. A, it wasn't a complete disaster. There's certainly some some things you'd, you'd want to look into, you know, make sure they don't, uh, you know, but their fundamentals are all really solid double D. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So I, I agree. I agree. Uh, Alex Clark, $5 Greenhaven question for thank you. you Ryan. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, what deity would you personally recommend for the church outside of the village? So the church actually doesn't have a named deity because I wanted it to be, again, system agnostic. A couple of thoughts for you, and you can take this and spin it into the system of your choice with the, the, you know, insert name of deity based on that system. I think obviously a nature deity is a good choice. A fertility deity would be a good choice for obvious reasons. Mm -hmm. And um, (laughs) uh, you could also just go with a solidly good aligned deity. Um, That doesn't mean that everything that happens in the Lakeside Chapel has to follow that alignment. So, um, yeah, pro for in an idyllic village, you're probably not going to want like a god of war. It just probably wouldn't fit. Uh, no, nothing dark. No, obviously nothing dark. You know that out in the open. Um, you you can do a neutral deity too. Uh, yeah. And if you look at some of the the pantheon from AD and D, there are a lot of good choices that fit into uh, either the nature or fer- fertility theme. And, and that's where I was going with that one. Thank you uh, again, Alex. Yeah, you brought up earlier like using AI and you know I'm I think you know Hasbro probably has different designs for for using AI and the way it's compounding you know it, it is a little bit scary and I for a while I was like oh will you ever be able to have like a uh, an AI DM and I just couldn't envision it but I now that I've kind of started fooling around with you know like the chat GPTs and that um, I can kind of see um, where it might happen. I mean, yeah, no, I, be a little I, I think it's going to happen. Sad, but Chris Cox has telegraphed that it's absolutely a done deal. Um, I'm going to I'm going to backtrack to Alex, especially since he gave you a five dollar super chat. Um, oh, he wants me to ask, absolutely name a deity that would perfectly fit Talos if you want a name. <laughs> um <laughs> Cox or, Cox made some interesting statements, and I love referring to Chris Cox, um, but he is setting the table 
so that the wind is out of the sails of the AI argument. Um, he, he's flat mm -hmm. out acknowledging that it exists and saying how wonderfully the IP dovetails with it and how beautifully the strategy would be, or how beautifully, how beautiful the strategy would be if AI can be leveraged specifically with the Dungeons and Dragons IP. This was an interview that he gave about three weeks ago. Um, he is diffusing the argument before it's made, which is a wonderful, again, business decision. Uh, I can't fault them for how they're, uh, they're carrying out their strategy. Yeah, it's a business, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, it is a business. Um, I think AI has a, it does have a bit of a place. I mean, like, you know, at our table, you know, our friend, uh, Captain Stern, he's a bard, you know, and I, I normally don't, obviously don't like people fooling around at the table on their phone, but what he'll do is if he hears something and it's relevant to the game, He'll use like Chad GPT to, to whip up literally like a quick bardic song <laughs> or something that just happened. And uh, we, we've gotten a couple of chuckles about that, haven't we? Yeah, uh, absolutely. So it's probably, you know, look, you can use it that way kind of as a tool. You maybe not as a crutch, you know, try tr maybe try to think of something first. I'm not first. big on AI art. You don't like the AI art? I don't think I do. I think that it takes away from the actual artists. I'm starting to feel like that dude from Napster. You know, like, yeah, yeah. I just feel like, you know, huh, Rogan can draw, you know, yep. Double D's daughter's a great artist. I just feel like there's artists out there that could be doing stuff. And I just feel like the AI art. And then when we saw like Rogan pulling up some stuff from his campaign that he did, like, you know, the girl was trying to wear a nine inch nail shirt and it was like, all jacked up and like yeah. you know huffy's pizza was like you know harry's pizza. it just <laughs> looked like sanskrit yeah just it just everything's just like oh this isn't yeah. quite what i was looking for well, how about you just draw what you were looking for well, that's the thing mouse I, I think if you approach ai arts and i'm no shame in my game green haven is 100 ai art but here's the difference this ai is not you don't go to mid journey and get what you see in green haven this mm -hmm. is a custom AI model that I curated on and it my wouldn't own. Be six, and it wouldn't be $6 either. And it wouldn't be $6. Yep. Right. But yeah, also, you, tra you trained your AI pretty. Yep. I know you've been working on that a while. Yeah. Every but, single piece that's in Greenhaven is physically retouched for not less than an extended period of time by me in Photoshop too. So if you use AI as the artist... I agree with you a hundred percent. If and you that's use what it, I'm referring to. If you use it as yeah. a tool, then we we're gonna have a different conversation. Um the 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 hot sister in the lakeside chapel, yes, the generation was originally built on AI, but there are hours into that piece beyond that. I'm so, referring to Ryan just how, how you phrased it. AI is the artist. I'm not right. in love with that at all. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, uh, and then, it, look, it, even my daughter, you know, who is, as uh, Crazy Mouse uh, mentioned, is an artist. You know, I asked her, like, what do you think of all this AI, honey? And she's like, oh, it's okay. She's like, it's just a tool. She's like, we do, we better just kind of learn to get along with it and maybe it, it's not going anywhere. It. it ain't going anywhere. That the right. genie's out of the bottle. So, yeah, you um, got to use it just like you would. Uh, we're all old guys here. Remember the hubbub when digital artists were not even perceived as artists? Mm -hmm. Oh, yep. those digital artists. Yep. This is just the next step on that staircase. Yeah. That's yeah, all that's it a is. Good, that's yep. a good analogy. Yeah. And of course, you know, you can also do the, um, there's fo look, there's folks like Miguel and Sylvia, you know, who have kind of had, <laughs> you know, just they're, they're, they're outspoken and, you know, their, their politics. So they have a hard time getting, you know, timely artists to do work for them. And, you know, finally, Miguel just said, F it. I'm going to, um, I'm going to be probably one of the best AI <laughs> art, you know, people out there. And, um, you know, that, that dude knows how to work those prompts. So every, you know, that's, his, he, he'll say, that's our livelihood. Publishing RPG books is how we make money. And I can't afford 
to have an artist just be like, ah, oh, you know, I'm just going to flake out. I'm not going to submit work for, you know, six weeks. He's like, I literally, this is how we put bread on the table, him and Sylvia. So he's like, you know what? I'm just going to keep the control in my own hands. And um, tell you what, they, their stuff looks pretty good a lot of the time. No, oh, it does. It does. I, I know um, we talked to Miguel and Sylvia when they first made that decision. And I, I, you can't fault them. If they were going to, first of all, they're freaking machines with their releases. They they crank out such oh, yeah. volume of material. And then the interesting thing is it's volume of good material, right? That yes. they can't have an artist that would keep up with their pace. And like you said, yep. it is their living. It is what keeps the roof over their head. So absolutely use it. And they use it in the right way. You're right. Miguel knows prompts like nobody's business and it shows too because i always say if you can tell it's ai art at first glance you're not doing it right yep. i've had people ask me who was the artist for green haven and then it's they yell at me when i tell them yeah. <laughs> it's like well and, it fooled you didn't, didn't and, <laughs> and i'll and i'll and i'll take that i'll take that yeah yeah but look my philosophy is if Look, if you don't have a strict timeline, you know, you're, you know, kind of like me, you know, the thing I'm working on, yeah, you know what, I, I kind of wanted to have that touch, you know, of a, of a real artist, and I do have one in Rogan, um, so I'm fine doing that. Even that, even there, I will have, there will be some AI, like you know, I'm gonna do like some just some AI, like watercolor backgrounds, maybe for the pages, lighten it up, you know, kind of doing something like that. So that's the way it should be used, just kind of as a little tool here and there or to enhance yeah to enhance or you know if you're gonna if you're a really good at it like miguel and sylvia and ryan you know if you can make it dance then absolutely do it and there's and, uh, time you... in that too uh oh yeah for creating sure. and... my model was not less than 300 hours yep so uh you know you can't go to mid journey and get that result it is a custom model that I programmed from Stable Diffusion, and I trained with curated libraries of art, and it's gone through now five iterations. Um, the, the stuff it's cranking out now makes Greenhaven look bad. <laughs> so, wow. um, What's it, the name it, of the new one coming out? Uh, the new one is Umber Hollow, the barony from beyond. So um, yeah. it, it loses guys, size get, to that. but. That's, get that's get uh, Greenhaven. Greenhaven. The link is in the description here. So it, obviously, one of the side benefits of being able to use AI art masterfully, keep the cost $6. low. Yeah, save yeah. money. Three bucks and for a PDF. Full color. There's art on every page. I there's no yep. way I could do that at seven bucks. No, right? No, you couldn't. Absolutely. Are you not. in a direct path next Monday, Ryan? For the eclipse. For the eclipse. I am not. I am not. We are. We are. I know. And nothing. Yeah. You are the point where, geographically, you are the the most southern point I could get to, that would have the 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 full eclipse. The full. Yeah. Yeah. They're 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 anticipating like a hundred thousand people coming to coming to our area. <laughs> I heard, and and that's on the conservative side. I heard. It, <laughs> oh man. They're, they're planning more. Like every work is saying, like work from home that day. Don't go out. Yeah, like, yeah. You know, it's like, are the, uh, like I I ninety I seventy nine could be like parking lots for a while. I'm hearing a lot of things that I also kind of heard like in a different way for Y two K. If you remember that, I a hundred percent agree with that. <laughs> <And it's> like, <laughs> well, like eh, can it all be true? You know, but, I you worked know. at a credit card company for Y two K, and they were oh. so worried about it. But what actually screwed everything over, uh, Y2K was actually a leap year. So it was 22900 that screwed up everything, not Y2K <laughs> itself. <laughs> yeah, ended up being much ado about nothing. But everybody was saying, like, oh, planes are going to fall out of the sky. Hey, Kelly LeBrock was AI. Originally. From, uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the original AI. Hot weird piece, science. too, back then. Yeah, weird science. <laughs> Speaking of Robert Downey Jr., he had a small role in that. Yeah, he was one of the bullies. Yeah, what, was he? Yeah, yep. And he was in. 
he was in Easy Money too, right? Rodney he, Dangerfield. Uh, not Easy Money. Uh, uh, head of the class or whatever it was yeah, called. Yeah. Back to school. Back, back to, school. to school. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yeah. With Derek the, Lutz. Uh, triple Lundy. <laughs> Yeah, the triple <laughs> India. Yeah. He played Derek Lutz. <laughs> Derek Lutz, yeah. I was it's ironic. I was watching an old Rodney stand up. Man, we need comedians to make a comeback again. There are no more comedians that can just tell a joke regardless of their politics and not give a fuck. Yep. I like it's Bill couple, Burr, but-, but I like watching old clips of Norm. He Yeah. He was good. Norm did was you good. see Norm, the, Norm was great. the Norm's final deal that he did from his webcam? I, I don't think so. The last one I just saw of him was he was actually doing an actual stand-up show. Okay. Uh, I think it's on Netflix, but when he was in COVID, mm-hmm. he just turned on his webcam and recorded and did stream of consciousness comedy set for like 90 minutes. Mm. And uh, they released it shortly after he passed. And oh, okay. it was good, but you could tell that he was not well. And that 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 sort of sombered the entire thing. Because yeah. I loved Norm. <laughs> yeah. God, it's like, why, why do the good ones have to go? Yeah. Yeah. Even Bill Burr has softened. Yes, he a has. A little bit. Yeah, so he's 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 getting a little little safe. You know, he's he's yeah. he's earning that Hollywood money. He doesn't want to endanger it. So the the word the thing I didn't like about Bill is you know when Gina Carano was going through all that, just getting you know publicly excoriated. Talk it. about somebody who was in kind of the same as an Ed Piscor situation. That's Gina Carano, literally having you know a prominent gig just pulled out from under you, and then all of a sudden for you know for making one tweet, which was by the way right on, <laughs> you know she she's being called the, you know a Nazi and all this other stuff and. Fortunately, you know, Gina is a tough gal. Um, I kind of lost my train of thought there, but um, you were doing the parallel between her and uh, Ed. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I think I had Bill Burr didn't stick up for her. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. It, 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 like he, he kind of stuck up for her. Like he was on a podcast, I remember. Thank you, by the way, Crazy Mouse. Yep. Where would I be without you? My hetero life mate. <laughs> Um, Eiffel Tower is coming up. (laughs) He's doing a podcast and he's like, yeah, you know, and this is after it all happened. And he, you know, they were talking about, he's like, oh yeah, what a shame. And she's such a sweetheart too. And all the, all these nice things to say about her. And I'm like, why the fuck didn't you have the balls to say something publicly to support her when she needed it? You know, I mean, if she, if you really loved her, you know, that much, that's fine. But it just kind of seemed like you didn't want to get, kind of in the middle of it which is fine too but don't sit there and go oh man what happened was terrible she's such a sweetie i mean say something look who's in the house howard hughes hello how about johnny be good with anthony michael hall yeah good to see you here hh h2 is that a new logo h it looks new yeah because the other one was of a person wasn't it it's probably howard hughes yeah <laughs> uh we, we asked Howard Hughes how long his fingernails were, uh, Ryan. <laughs> There's a person in the chat, Howard Hughes. He's a, he's a great, uh, great supporter of the channel. I see him with the, with, with the Johnny B. Good reference. So there yeah. you go. Yeah. We used to talk about the spruce goose and uh, <laughs> t- 10 inch fingernails and hair down to his ass. Um, I don't think it's that Howard though. I don't think so either. What are you uh, are you playing much art in the way of RPGs these days, uh, Ryan? Yeah, I've actually got uh, my regular group that's uh, effectively the the guinea pigs for everything that I produce. Uh, they're coming up Friday. They are still. How many people are in your group? We we run with five players and me, five. so six total. And you're uh, the DM. Yeah, that's my sweet mm-hmm. spot. Five mm-hmm. is the perfect number, in my opinion. Uh, you want five PCs. Um, I also uh, run a group of what I call 5e refugees. Um, in my day gig, there's a bunch of nerds from the IT department that were stuck playing 5th edition with a Sparkle Troll DM. And I rescued them and brought them in, and I'm running them through AD&D. And they are all in their 20s. I think the oldest one is in his early 30s. 
So this is a whole new world and their eyes are uh, opening up and they love it. Nice. So I've got those two core groups plus, you know, pick up stuff from the FLGS every now and then. But uh, my and core this- group is, is, is coming up Friday. I'm excited. We had the, we had two guys that got COVID last week and uh, the week before. So we haven't run for two weeks now. So I'm itching to get back to that table. Hmm. Well, good. Good luck. Um, I know what you mean about the uh, the Sparkle Troll uh, DMs. Um, like Mrs. D is in a board game group, and right. they keep they keep trying to like all these women keep trying to start D and D. You and know, Mrs. D is like you know she's very she's not like me. You know she's not black hearted, but <laughs> she's saying like oh yeah they're trying their best. You know, and I can just kind of picture based on what I'm being told like. Eh. There's like cat pee, the cat people, you know, the tieflings and all that. I'm like, oh, yeah. And she's like, well, you should, you know, you should show them, you know, what real D&D is like. And I'm like, well, yeah, it's don't want to do that, but I ain't running a the community center walks here. walks into yeah. town, the town guard execute it. There you go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so easy to do, but um, it's like for all the, all the advice out there and all that, it just, all of it just kind of gets lost in the in the miasma but um it doesn't seem like dming is getting any better with these people they don't don't really play i'm convinced of that anymore they don't really play the books are coffee table books and toilet reading material they they don't try they they pull up these garbage pop gaming media articles that tell them step-by-step what they need to do. Here's the five best ways to do this. Here's the 10 best things to do this. You're never going to believe what you can do with your campaign. If you it's paint by numbers, double D they're not playing. They're not playing. Well, I mean, thinking of like the, the folks in like Mrs. D's uh, board game group. Um, Do I hear it in the arms of an angel playing? (laughs) That's Not- Sarah McLaughlin song for the puppies. <laughs> oh, okay. I always I always picture that as the trouble. Tr- I don't know. Um, yeah, that's um. <laughs> um. Anyway, I think what happens is they try Ryan, and then it stops after a couple weeks when they realize it's nothing like Critical Role. Um, it's a lot different. Joe you, Magnello's not walking through that door. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Matt Mercer's now walking through that door, people. Um, and it's these expectations, as you know, we've we've probably all discussed, are just so unreasonable that it just it deflates people. But I mean, it doesn't have to be that way. I mean, look, your game table should first and foremost be a hangout, right? Right. I mean, I wouldn't want to play with people that I couldn't hang out with. I agree with that. On some level, even if it's not like an everyday hang. But if I can't picture going and grabbing a beer with you. That's why we've only added one player in the last 20 years. 20 years. We added one player because he hung around long enough. He loved D&D, talked about his own stuff. And it took us that long, you know, probably. I guess lo- I'm not talking about Miranda's girlfriend. No, no, no. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But we, yeah, we're talking about right. Mr. Pew Pew Zolt. We're yeah. talking about Zolt. Yeah, but he hung around probably about four, a good three or four years in our group before we were like, all right, let's, let's see if this can work. And he's been a, look, he's one of the best players at the table now. Uh, I've made the comment that I think he is our best role player yeah. at our table. Yep. Not afraid to take the lead. You know, which I'm but he sure, also is not afraid to sit in the back. Yeah, I mean, he he doesn't like dominate, but if something needs to be done, he'll be like, "All right, let's let's do it." And as a DM, I'm sure you can attest to this, Ryan. That's all you want, you know. Sometimes is this just decision. try, just yeah, try a decision. And... Let's move the story forward. <laughs> yeah, yeah, let's let's somebody do something, you know, rather than just kind of look at each other. Well, we could do this, we could do that, we could. Somebody's got to be like, "All right, this is what we're gonna do." You know, so he fills that role, uh, you know, lately. Um, but yeah, I mean, look, we're, we're blessed, you know, we've, we're, we've all been friends for a very long time. So I know, oh, that's that, I know a lot thing. of people would die. Yeah. A lot of people would die to have that. Have you, have you been friends with your group for a little yeah, while? Or? Of the five, three have been playing for over 15 years, leaning towards 20. Uh, one of, one of okay. the guys I played with when I was 18 years old, right? 
Yep. So uh, that is fortunate. Um, it's funny that our tables have the wait lists and their tables have the empty chairs. Yeah. So. Yep. And it's, I wouldn't have it any other way because no. it's like, that's, that's fine. <laughs> it's very telling. Um, you know, it's, I, that's why I also, I did want to do a little bit of, you know, just live play from our table to, to basically just show like, all right, well, look, the, this is how I DM. This is how we play. Um, we're not trying to show off like we're great, you know, or we're, you know, the, the be all end all, but we're just a good, solid, normal gaming group. You know, they can just kind of tell a story through player action and agency and, um, you know, just be consistently at it for year after year after year. Right. I mean, we collectively have to be doing something right. Because look, every Friday night, these guys show up. Um, so, you know, let's, I always say like, let's keep it going. Cause you know what? You lose that sort of link who let this run Halcyon. <laughs> I let him in, you know, but you, you know, you let this kind of the gaming link go and everybody would say like, Oh, that's okay. We'll still stay together and do things outside of gaming. And that may last for a little bit, but look, gaming brings people together and like it, it is, it is the glue, you know, that kind of holds, you know, our group together. Right. Now, do you have that one guy that is only a gaming friend and just doesn't find that place outside of the group? Because I look, it's funny. I was thinking about this a couple of weeks ago. Historically, we're all friends, right? And we hang out, but there's always that one that is exclusively your gaming buddy and yep. uh, doesn't sort of fit the mold. And I didn't know if that was unique to me or, or if that's something you guys have or have experienced too. Well, I think, you know, obviously Zolt is the newest member um, and he's, he's a little younger than us. Uh, now he's, he can hang with us. You know, he gets a lot of our references, you know, and he's. That's important say, too, right? It is. Yeah. <laughs> And like politically, of course, he's, you know, <laughs> very far from, you know, like a leftist. He's, he's very, he's probably the, the closest to me politically. So um, that's good. Now we bond over movies. So he has like a movie night at his place. He's, he's the guy that has like over 4,000 DVDs. Like he's oh. a whole eighties horror aficionado. So he is Mr. Movie man. That's why when he, whenever he's on, we try to do like movie related stuff. You know, so, uh, you know, I know Mrs. D and I go over there every time he has one. And a lot of the other guys have, too. So I would say right now we probably do it at certain points hang out. You know, it's just that, you know, Zolt's probably coming in a little bit later in the game. Whereas, you know, obviously, like I said, you know, I've been I've known, uh, you know, Crazy Mouse for, you know, coming up on 30 years. I right? think it goes in. It depends on what we're doing. If we were going to watch the game, you know, yeah, we wouldn't invite Rogan. Yeah, yeah, like Rogan, who you know, obviously we've known. I've known Rogan for almost the same time as I've yeah. known Crazy Mouse. But yeah, he hates sports. <laughs> a so pro, like, pro we, sports, right? So he wouldn't go to a yeah. like. So that's not someone. And same with Zolt, we wouldn't say, "Hey, Zolt, we're going to watch the game tonight. Do you want to go?" Yeah, yes. Yeah, so there's there's certain little subsets in our group, but to answer your question. There's there's some overlap for everything. Yeah, so like, there it, it, there is no just gaming because there's there's always some things we can do together. Um, you know, whether it be movies or just going out having a beer, watching a game or something. Yeah. And I, I I'm taking it you I take by that like you have like a kind of a games only person in your group. There is a games only person. Um yeah. And, Which is fine, by the way, right? I mean, yeah, yeah, I have no problem with him. I've again, I've known him for going on twenty five years now. Um, I've we've tried, but it's like he has no interest other than yeah. that game, and so I'm not going to force him into a situation where he's not comfortable. Yeah. He's he's you know the eternal bachelor, right? <laughs> Um, yep. We used to joke that he's, you know, part vampire because we never see him eat. We never see him drink. He does not drink alcohol. Uh, even if we're sitting around and having a beer at the table, 
Uh, I've never seen him take a drink. I've never seen him express an interest in a lady. He, he just exists. He is a Ken doll, but a gaming Ken doll. <laughs> you know, yep. <laughs> and, and and I'm okay. I love him in that uh, in that own special hetero way that is a gaming brother, and he legitimately would not be a fit anywhere else. So why would I force him to do that, right? Yeah, yeah. You want him to be comfortable, so yes. Look, if he ever wants to come out of his shell, I'm sure. Uh, you know, yeah, he'll, he'll come out. But yeah, you know, you don't want to force people to do that. Um, <laughs> Halcyon beer. Halcyon. You have to drink that hoop tea. It's oh. nerd cognito approved. <laughs> I, I, uh, Halcyon, I I have an admission, and since I'm going to be absent this Saturday on the speakeasy, I might I might have purchased more ho- hoop tea. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, what time do you guys do the speakeasy on speakeasy is every Saturday afternoon at five Eastern. Um, five, okay, yeah. Cause I got to get, I got to get uh, James on uh, neck, beard, neck beardy at James. And as you know, he's, he's way over in um, yeah Ireland. And I was going to do it Saturday, but I don't want to stream over anybody. I, I know and like, um, I'll go ahead. You know, we, we've no, got no, no, this, I, post this week. I won't be there. I'm, I have to go to one of my, <laughs> it's funny. One of the guys at the gaming table, he's, he's getting married. So uh, I'm, oh, okay. I'm going to nice. be in his wedding and I will be at the aviary partying down and not getting too intoxicated. Sweet. So nice. Yeah. I wouldn't, I wouldn't do it at five anyway. Actually earlier would be better. Cause obviously, like I said, we're dealing with uh, him being yeah, across that's, the that's pond. what a five, six hour difference, depending on where he falls. So, Oh yeah. Jeff from Denkar. Always got to be sensitive friend. to our guys that uh, call you mate. So, Oh yeah. Of course. Yeah. James is a good one too. Yeah. He's got the, uh, I've never actually crossed paths with him. So, uh, tell him he is highly regarded from all of the nerd cognito guys. I will do that. Absolutely. Jeff from Denkar. Thank you so much. Canadian $5 question. What can you tell me about the bro SR and its relation to the OSR? <laughs> oh that, boy. Is that a, uh, is that a trick? Did question? I not get enough trouble this week already? <laughs> Uh, Jeffro, when didn't he go kind of dark on his Twitter? Or it's protected only. Uh, he did. I I I try not to follow him regularly, so it's not like I'm checking up on on Jeffro Johnson. Um, I think we've uh, I think we've moved into the Guyana phase of the uh, the Jonestown <laughs> parallel. Uh, <laughs> Jeffro, short answer: <laughs> uh, the Bro SR has similarities to the OSR in the way that you spell it only they are absolutely a hundred percent an anti-osr movement uh where the osr yeah. sort of embraces interoperability between games and the philosophy of design the bro sr is very rigid in the way that you must run your game brother we're clanging and banging and running our games with one-to-one time i'd call it a bronstein but i can't spell that on twitter uh, uh, I'm going to get in trouble. Now, yeah. they, they are very much an anti-OSR that capitalized on the popularity of the phrase OSR and, and worked it into their shtick. Jeffro has been doing this shtick since before the Bro-SR was labeled. Yeah. Um, they've now, you know, fooled a lot of folks that were tangentially in the OSR. Um I'm not even going to go there because I'm going to get us all in trouble. Double D I'm done. <laughs> well, you know, their the big thing is the one-to-one time where, you know, you're supposed to run multiple campaigns at the same time. And then you time passes. Like if there's a week in between game sessions, there's a week that passes in the game world. Um, it's an interesting concept. It's not one I would be likely to try. Although, you know, look, if you, if it leads you to, um, keep better maybe a little bit better track of your time in your regular game then that's fine um but it's not like the one true way like jeff Rowe is we always kind of joke that he's kind of like a cult leader and i think there are a lot of people who maybe are bro sr adjacent or you know they're like oh come on you know i like a few things and uh you know guys like like crafty matt is is one i think of um adjacent <laughs> well i, I yeah. like crafty matt but there's no adjacent. He's there. <laughs> is he? Is he a one? But I didn't. I didn't think he was like a one to one. Like I don't know. Maybe he is, and I just ain't paying. I'm not paying attention. I didn't think he was like. 
like proselytizing. No, he's not a pro- as as right, and 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 there are a lot of good guys in the Bro SR. I've had some of them as guest hosts on N- on Nerd Cognito before, right? It, it, it's not a bad movement. It's just led by some ridiculousness. A moron. Um, it's it's led by it's, an absolute it's, moron. It's led by a moron. <laughs> Jeff, and Jeff Rowe unfortunately, is a moron. it does a lot more damage to the OSR, which we do enough infighting on our on our own. We don't need yes a, an external force working against us. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, it's we make the comparison that he's a cult leader because as stupid as it is and as, as kind of gay as it is, it's just he demonstrates all of the traits, but he just he has this, none of the charisma, you know, but he but he like it's almost like he, he wants to be one. And he, he, he does have like a cadre of like whenever he would post things, he get like 15 people who would like his every one of his tweets. And you can generally kind of, I don't want to say that's like, you know, how you, I don't know, how you judge someone, but um, he wasn't like pulling in huge numbers. You, you remember those action figures in the 80s? <laughs> Thank you, James. $5. Can't bench 350 You can't be in the bro SR, brother. <laughs> you guys Go remember ahead, the action figures in the 80s from like the, the, the dollar store? Where it wasn't like G.I. Joe, it was like G.I. John, and it wasn't He Man, it was He Dude. Jeff yes. Rowe oh, yeah, yeah. is you know what you're yeah. about. Jeff Rowe is to a cult leader like G.I. John was to G.I. Joe. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's like the dollar store, you know, military leader, you know, or cult, yeah, cult leader. Uh, um honestly, uh, Jeff from Denkar saw Cardinal Jeff come up on X and trying to figure it out. And its relation to the wider RPG industry. Well, look, I mean, we're, I think both Ryan and I are both uh, pretty comfortable enough to, yeah, listen to what he has to say. If you know, look, if you like it, that's fine. I, 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 I just think the guy's a moron. But um, I would love to have Jeffro on Nerd Incognito, but I'm pretty sure he has me blocked. So, uh, for what it's look, worth, he was on inappropriate characters before Ryan uh, took over um, as as one of the guests. It was it was a while ago, and it was. Yeah, you know, it was kind of when him and Pundit, you know, were obviously on speaking terms. Um, right. Yeah, you know, it was very, very popular episode. It's probably one of the most popular ones to this date. Um, like I said, he, he's a he's studied the advanced D&D rules, first edition, autistically. Ah, like that, I, I literally believe every day he gets up and he reads, he just reads and rereads, and he's probably reread the damn thing, you know, three times. And hey, he's also writing his own b- book like he released kind of a quad like a pamphlet sort of type book yeah if and you think Greenhaven is small <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly yeah how to win at D&D well all right I mean that's he look he's got his angle and he's trying to sell product okay so in that respect I, re- I respect the grind it's just his angle is stupid and I'll never buy his product <laughs> but he, he does work it really hard right he does. And yeah, he's very he's very committed. Uh, he's, he's doing a wizard thing. Guy. He's selling to that group that he knows is always going to buy it. That's that's yeah. what it is. Yeah, and he it's his first one was professional enough to you know like if you were didn't know anything about the bro SR were just like oh what is this oh how to win at D and want to win at D and D don't you want to win at D and D? And then it just puts a bunch of like old Gary isms and stuff like that in it. So I don't know. It's but the thing is it's it's like. He professes to love Gary Gygax, but then he'll disavow like when Gary Gygax said, like, feel free to ignore these rules if you want to. Fun is the most important thing at your table. <laughs> they like, well, he didn't really mean that. You know, it's like, well, are we following the rules as written? Because that is a rule as written inside the book. Type right. Shit. Uh, and Gary, the elephant in the room is also how easy they are to attack. Right. Oh, they can't yeah. have yeah. a sustained intellectual discourse if you are not in lockstep they're gonna tell you what to do with your mother and that doesn't really endear me towards listening to any legitimate good ideas they may have i've had guys come to me you know this is probably a good idea did you did you no it's pro sr yep 
Shit. If I'm not going to agree hook, line, and sinker, they're going to come after me for something. And, and it, it, it's just... <sighs> well, before he locked it down, you know, they were going after Call of Cthulhu. You know, somebody would, like Jeffro would post a picture of like masks or horror on the Orient Express, and he'd do one of his... He he's a very he's a very uh, feminine type person. For all the uh, <laughs> he loves talking about swing dancing, uh, <laughs> which Brother. always go, which always yeah, which always yeah, just amazed me. Like everything was like a swing dance uh, parallel for him. <laughs> but and he also runs. That reminds his... me of. I go gotta ahead. stop you for one second. It's like he's using that as a reference that maybe you would understand. It sounds like he used that as a reference once and someone was like, yes, that's a great analogy. And then he just keeps yeah. using it. He doesn't realize it's not 1933. Mrs. Mouse um, used this some term about spreading out money from a fundraiser. And she's like, well, it's peanut buttered out all over for all the students. Right. <laughs> and someone was like, yes. And now she uses that term for something that's spread out over a bunch of things is peanut butter. Peanut butter. And I'm just like, shut the fuck up. That's like the stupidest. Is that thing a legitimate? Like, or am I just, you know, might be a corporate thing. Uh, maybe the that's like a corporate thing. She, she's in, she's corporate. So it could be yep. a corporate thing. It could like be, I'll, I'll keep my ears open for that. Yeah. And cause I'm in corporate. We're going to peanut butter this loan out over, you know, all these people. <laughs> what? Yeah. That's yeah, also yeah. on the hub, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, so Jeff Jeff Rowe is he's very fe he's a very feminine guy. Uh for all for all of his talk about like lifting weights and doing that stuff, he's he's very passive aggressive, very feminine in his interactions. And he talks about swing dancing a lot. Um and I'm not saying that's expressly feminine, but it's a little odd, don't you think? Um, but like he'll he'll take sh shots out of the blue at things like Call of Cthulhu, like masks of Narlathotep, horror on the Orient Express, saying stuff like, you know, imagine thinking this is like a good adventure. It's like these are classics, and it's like the you don't play Call of Cthulhu for the same reasons or the same way that you play D and D. D and D is more of a when it's at its best, it's kind of like a sandbox. Well, the players do what they want to do and you know they just they sort of are driving the bus at the you know in the best of games um call of cthulhu to some extent you're there for the ride now you want obviously some freedom you want freedom in the world but in the same respect everybody knows that there's a plot happening at some point in the call of cthulhu game right i mean you right. don't have and, to... and you know you're dying or going insane because that's the point yeah. of call of cthulhu it's it's yeah. that it's facing that existential crisis. Right. And yeah, it is. It might be a little cliched these days. And, you know, that's that's a different story. But he's saying there's essentially saying there's no redeeming value for a game like Call of Cthulhu. Or it may even like just using, you know, some of those mega campaigns. And it's like, that's bullshit. You know, you can have a good you can adapt those things. And every good DM should adapt those things, you know, to make it fit the group and, you know, give them a little bit more agency. Eden's $5. I'm a new player than many here, but winning at D&D just seems ridiculous. Normally when people try to win like that, it ruins for all at the table. Uh, yeah, that's a, that's a fair point. Um, usually those people are kind of like attention hogs. Um, that's what it comes down to, or they, they're like kind of conversational bullies that just kind of trample over everybody and like, ah, oh, this is what we need to do. We, you know, we got to do this. Blah, blah, blah. Well, my job is to survive. Yes. Yeah, so, yeah. Mouse is always the crafty thief who would just want to survive in advance, <laughs> meet a girl, have some kids and yep. uh, advance. Yeah. Man, I, I, I could just imagine the level of main character syndrome that our buddy Jeffro must have at oh, the table. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And it's, I don't know. I mean, it's there. There seems to this seems to be going around, and it's like I understand. Like some people are kind of doing it because look, it it sells the hot dogs, and like I said before, I, I ain't taking money out of anybody's you know mouth. But you know, it's, the longer I go, the more the more I, I just I kind of gravitate more to to people like Ryan, people like Max Liao, um, who are just you know maybe we're all from the same generation, and it's like there's no one true way look 
it's like a Chinese menu. You take a little bit of this, a little bit of that, you know, do, do you act you should never act at the table. Well, that's bullshit. There are times you shouldn't act all the time at the table and you shouldn't act like there's an audience watching you, but you should at times when it's appropriate, get into character. And, you know, we've had great, you know, in character, you know, give and takes and, you know, shouting matches in character and that we had a LARPing session at a bar. <laughs> yeah, we had a LARPing session at a bar. Yes. <laughs> Him and uh, me and Gavin Morgan. Him and Gavin Morgan it. almost came to blows over who was the leader of the group. Didn't you? You ripped that. Is that when you ripped the straw out of his mouth? The, yeah. That is not the straw ripping. Time, okay. But um, there was another time where that happened, but that was not it. It all came to like that he was the leader of the group. And I was like, I'm not so sure. It might be me. And then he just. <laughs> went off and, flew into a rage and yes. it prompted an email like rant from him yeah. to double d at like four in the morning or something yeah he's very passionate you know he when is. he's look when he's invested when our friend gavin is invested he is a great great, great player, role player. great player yeah so i'd rather have that gavin than kind of you know like a you know disinterested or anything like that uh halcyon five dollars greatest sci-fi movie that stands the test of time <laughs> i vote Ooh. robot jocks <laughs> we actually saw that uh Thanks to uh, Zolt. He brought it over for a uh, outdoor movie this past summer. Um, I think I'd seen it maybe one time a long, long time ago, but I had forgotten most of it. What do you uh, what do you say there, Ryan? Any sci fi faves? Favorites are so hard because there's just so many. Um, if I have to pull a non horror because. You guys know my love for for the horror genre. Non horror sci fi favorite. Uh, I'm probably going to go with Blade Runner. Um, mm -hmm. Good choice. It, it's it's dark. It's got the setup. It includes Alien because it's the same universe. You know, um, yep. I, I'm meta thinking this one out um, with my personal, you know, guilty pleasure favorite sci fi, uh, which is Event Horizon uh as a number two so yeah. i Cal, got cal's uh, it, i was gonna say cal speaks for uh crazy mouse yeah, i know that <laughs> no, without a doubt double yeah. d love that movie yeah when it's on i always kind of watch it i enjoy that movie a lot yeah i've i love uh quite a few sci-fi movies so instead of giving you my favorite i'm going to give you one you may have never seen before it's kind of overlooked and i think it's very relevant today colossus the forbin project um, I'll tell you about that in a second. The fifth element is the goat of sci. There you go. Boy, you're, <laughs> we're in good company here. Eminently watchable movie. Um, it's, it's not my favorite, but it is eminently watchable. Like, Oh, three o'clock in the afternoon on a Saturday. Oh, fifth elements on TNT or whatever. Let's just keep it here. Yeah. <laughs> then it, you just kind of no read something in the in background. That. Oh no, no. It's a great, great movie. Yeah, I love it. Colossus, uh, deals with, a near future AI. So this will seem like it's it's modern, but it, it just kind of shows what happens when you turn over your nuclear weapons to an AI. Boy, that's not timely, is it? <laughs> <laughs> Any guesses on how it goes? <laughs> Track it down, watch it. I first got wind of that on uh, from Doomcock, and I'm glad I did. It's a great movie. Uh, Cal, another one of my favorites. Very dark. Uh, Soylent Green, very dystopian along those same lines. Um, Logan's Run. Yeah, I'd, I'd give the ed edge there to uh, Soylent Green. I think it's a little bit grittier, a little bit better. Logan's Run is charming. Ryan, right? I think you dropped some knowledge on somebody. Uh-oh. I, I, yeah. I, I, Bob, uh, Blade Runner. Uh, you never put together that Blade Runner is in the same universe as Alien. Yeah. Uh, Wayland is the birth of Wayland Dutani Corporation from from Alien, so it yep. is all the the same the same thing. Yep, it's um, in the in the corporations. Yep. Uh, don't know if this would be sci-fi or fantasy, but Big Trouble Little China, hard to go wrong there. Great, great movie. Uh, you know, you know, you were you were talking about the the Logan's Run and and the series of movies around there. I think that often overlooked for how legitimately good it is for dystopian movie, uh, THX 1138. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it does kind of get, I don't want to say it gets pushed down, but it's just kind of... Uh, 
gets lost because lost, of Star Wars. Left behind. Yeah, it gets left Man. behind. Yeah. Plus, yeah. another hot ass chick with puss hanging out a whole movie. So <laughs> yeah. That's not the love. Yeah. There you go. I knew I knew James was gonna come in strong with this one. Zarda speaks to you. Yeah, it's a, it's an uneven movie, uh, but it's definitely worth definitely worth a watch. Boy, that the floating head is just so <laughs> so odd. It's like everybody did cocaine on that movie. Um, including Sean Connery to get into costumes. Yeah, and an <laughs> or, orange diaper. Um, <laughs> but it, somehow it works. The it holds together. The um the last half gets a little little bit ponderous at times uh but it's it's a good story i mean overall soldier with kurt russell connected to blade runner oh i'm not sure about that huh. i don't who, know who, who directed soldier it wasn't uh what's his name was it? ridley, ridley scott question. mrs double d's clog dancing upstairs yeah mrs d is home from uh which means it's probably time for because i know ryan is uh we grabbed ryan straight from work so uh <laughs> I tell you, why don't we uh why don't we uh cut one last one yeah the original death race death race 2000 yep yep good good flick yes yeah, I, I like uh going off on tangents like that uh whoever said that um well done uh but yeah why don't we uh why don't we cut it off here um well one more flash gordon oh nope sorry flash gordon bleaker making it in uh, probably that's probably due for a remake, isn't it, Brian or Ryan? Flash Gordon. Flash Gordon. Yeah. I mean, uh, I know that it's hard to improve on perfection. But, there uh, was a rumor buzzing around. I want to say a year or two ago about it, but I didn't hear anything that came of it. So I assume that the option probably expired. I'm sure that they will f it up Fuck real it up. good yeah. sooner yeah, or later. So leave it alone. Yeah. You didn't need to redo. You you know every time you people talk about making remaking Warriors, leave that movie alone. Yeah. 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 Some of these things are just perfection. Yeah. Like Roadhouse didn't need remade. <laughs> no. All right, Nothing so wrong with that one. <laughs> CLS alcohol. It comes from Brad <laughs> Wesley. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, Crazy Mouse is a big uh, Roadhouse point, like point Roadhouse. break guy. He's, yeah. uh, he, he loves all those, all those uh, movies. I remember because the last time I was on, we, it was Point Break. <laughs> yeah, we were... they... Johnny Utah. Johnny Utah. Give me two. Maybe it's just a thing for Patrick Swayze. Yeah. Well, it's a good. It's not a bad. It's gonna lose bad, your Eiffel uh, Tower spot there, Double D. <laughs> There's always That's more. Right, room. Yeah. The more the merrier. Uh, he can't harm me. He's he's dead. It's like a buffet. It's like a buffet. He is dead. Yeah, I forgot Patrick Swayze was also in uh, Donnie Darko too. Speaking yeah. of sci-fi movies, another good one. James that Dag. Is a good one. James Gang says crazy about. Crazy about Swayze. Crazy about Swayze. Yep. <laughs> all right, well, let's uh, let's uh, let's give poor Ryan here a break. Uh, yeah. He's had a, he's had a long day, uh, so I'll, we'll say goodbye to you right now, and then we'll say goodbye to everybody else. Ryan, um, Village of Greenhaven. Link is in the description. Yep. Um, anything? Uh, anything else? Any uh, benediction? Chill the show, right? Uh, Nerd Cognito available on every major podcast provider. Again. Uh, can't thank you guys enough for tuning in every week if you're not drops tuning in it drops tuesdays uh apple podcast pod spotify uh, uh youtube music wherever you get a podcast we are available also check out our youtube channel uh there's archives of the show there they're delayed about six weeks so it's not the optimum way to uh to listen to the show but we do have the saturday speakeasy every saturday at five that's our live stream where there's no script no agenda no filter just uh a whole group of folks from the hobby that are all friends getting together and, and having a good conversation so give our youtube a follow that's our baby channel we're really trying to grow that and make sure that you are subscribed at one of those podcast providers so that you can hear the big show and if you are so inclined, pop Greenhaven into your campaign setting and let me know on Twitter how it's going. Um, I've seen really dark interpretations of it, and uh, I know a guy that's running it with his eight-year-old daughter and her friends. So uh, awesome stuff. It spans everything. I think you're going to like it. 
uh, it's between and, three and eight bucks. Yeah, right? you got nothing to lose, right? You, right. you got a Big Mac to lose. So yeah. that's, and that's we it. could afford it, right? Yep. yep. <laughs> Halcyon said Excellent. it best. Speakeasy is lots of drinking and headbutting sometimes. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do I need to know that? Do I need to know the password to get into this Speakeasy? When am I going to get an invite? But there, some uh, right? some Saturday <laughs> at five, just drop me a message on X. There's no planning for the Speakeasy. You could do it this week if you want, but I won't be there, and I want you to be there so that we can have some yeah, fun. Yeah. So yeah, we'll we'll, we'll do it in the, sometime in the near future. Where uh, you know maybe maybe when uh, something starts to heat up a little bit, we can. Uh, yeah, yeah. And, uh, do that, get together. So I'd love to. Yep, for sure. Well, Mouse, okay. it was a good time. Double D, thank you for having me on. I really appreciate it. And it, it was a blast, man, a there as always. Yeah. Thank you, Ryan. Yeah, we'll do it again soon, buddy. No problem. Right. We'll see you guys. Yep. Take care, Ryan. Bye-bye. All righty. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Double D, oh, stop the man. presses. I didn't hope to chance. Good Lord. Howard Hughes, you are... Always too kind. My 10-inch fingernails look even more bent when viewed through the, jar, the jars of urine. <laughs> Great steam stream as always, friends. Cheers. Thank you so much. Thank you, Howard. Much too kind, sir. Much too kind. Uh, we uh, we really do appreciate you. Um, all right. So, oh, I can take these out. These things that hurt my ear. Labor of love. Yeah, labor of love. Um. Anything you want to go over before we wish uh, everybody goodbye here, Crazy uh, Mouse? Anything no, we missed? or I don't think so. I think that Ryan did a great job. I remember him as a guest before. I remembered his podcast talking about it, about them taping on Sundays, dropping on Tuesdays. Mm -hmm. He seems yep. like such a good guest, you know? Very professional. Yep. yep. A good Keeps dude. Keeps it going. He looks like a blast from the past. He looks like Dave Pilatus to me. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I could see that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I could see that. Yeah, for sure. Oh, by the way, Chris Chris Miller, thank you. I didn't see Chris. Maybe he's he's uh, busy tonight. I haven't but, seen him tonight. Yep. You got some merch? He just sent me that. He's That's like, nice. Double D, I got an extra shirt. You want it? I'm like, oh, are you kidding? So, um, yeah, thank you so much, Chris. Uh, remember, support folks like uh, Ryan and uh, Chris Miller, um, the Mad Scribe. He's really got a, like a lot riding on uh, baptism of fire from Pundit. And uh, regardless of what you think about Pundit, we all know like Pundit is a fantastic uh, researcher and a you know pretty good game designer. Um, so I think he, uh, uh, from what I'm seeing in the uh, PDF, it is, it is really good. I mean, there's some good art in it. It's full color. Uh, Chris said he's, he's worked his tail off. Um, for it so when that comes out uh we'll we'll get we'll shine a little light on it but just put it on your radar um because it looks really good and i'm not lying there it's it's like medieval poland but like with magic and and stuff like that and it's got all the research that you'd expect so um someone earlier in the chat like like two hours ago or so said that they got their greg gillespie book oh yeah yeah dragon yeah. so yeah yep Yep, I've been kind of pouring through mine. When um, one of these days, we're just going to convert over Otto and Roland. When uh, mm. yeah, obviously Ro uh, Rogan couldn't make it tonight, uh, but we'll we'll convert them over and uh, just start doing the Dragon Slayer. Uh, maybe next time we'll do that. I don't know. We'll, we'll figure it out. Uh, great night, guys. Uh, thanks again. Coming strong. Thank you for yep. everybody for chiming in tonight. Yep. All the super chats. Uh, James, thank you. Howard, yep. everybody in between. Jeff from Denkar, all the others uh, that I missed. Um, thank you so much for um, supporting the channel. Um, Cal got his Dragon Slayer. Oh, nice. Nice. Yeah. Overkill so Joe got his too. Yep. Yeah. They're starting to show up. Uh, DM James, uh, when I was talking to him Saturday, he's like, I didn't know if I was going to get it. And then he's like, you know what? I broke down. He's like, I got it. He's like, and I, he, you know, and they like it. So guys, it just, like I said, just for an old school art book, <laughs> John Osborne got his, everyone sounds like Santa's on his way. Yep. Yep. James, I earned it. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. All right, guys. Um, I think, uh, three hours is just about enough, but the conversation S flowed and uh, somebody wanted, you to make an outro of yo mama jokes <laughs> <laughs> not talented enough to do that come on um yeah that was funny i, I like when we go on little tangents like i do the sci-fi you know movies stuff like that i like when we go off script yep. 
I do. Yes, I do too. Off script. We, we don't really have a script. We just kind of have uh, things that we want to talk about. Yeah, some dark, went to some dark areas tonight, but I do think it's worth, it's worth, that's a man's life that's now over. Um, so I think it's worth documenting. And I know it's not easy to go through that kind of stuff. Uh, but, and like I said, I'm not a huge Ed Piscor fan, but I'm just fascinated by the story. And uh, boy, that last letter, um, if you don't get a little bit of a lump in your throat, I don't know. Um, I know I know, I did at, at some point. Even tonight, I was kind of, oof. Because, you know, you're thinking about all the people left behind. So obviously, guys, if you... You know, let's try not to do that. If you, if you get into a dark place, uh, seek some help, seek some help, but also just realize like, you know what? Could this change in like a year? Is there a, is, can I see a way of this maybe changing in a year? Like completely. And from almost every problem. Yeah. Like I said, if you sold every, even if it was like, I'm going to sell everything and I'm just going to move to halfway across the world or, you know, just do some geographic arbitrage and be like, you know what? I'm going to move to like, I'm going to move down to Uruguay with Pundit <laughs> and uh, you know, where your dollar can go more and like nobody knows you. And it's like, all right, try that for a while. If that doesn't work, well, you know, whatever, but just do, you know, just try something because you know, we only, only get one crack at this thing and um, you're, you're probably better off uh, around uh, than not being around unless you're like Daryl A.O. or Alex DeCampi. And if that's the case, uh, well, no comment. Um, <laughs> all right, guys. Uh, tomorrow is today, but dead is forever. Yeah, absolutely. Let's end on that. Uh, tomorrow is today, but dead is forever. I like tomorrow that. Tomorrow isn't today. He's trying to, he corrected a double D. Gotcha. Tomorrow isn't today. Okay. I see, I knew what you were saying. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, it's, yeah, it's a permanent, as they'd always say, it's like a permanent solution to a, usually a temporary problem. Um, so, alrighty. Um, I'm going to, um, get out. Peace, everybody. Have a great night. Love you guys. Um, I, like I said, I may, I'm going to try to hook up with, uh, James, Nick Beardia, James, and maybe we might do it some, something Saturday of this afternoon. He's got the bastard princess coming. So, uh, you guys take care. Love you all. Thanks again for the support, the conversation, the super chats, all that shit. Thanks, Cal, for uh, patrolling the grounds. Everybody, peace. Hey, man, is that Double D? Yeah, man. Well, turn it up, man. Let's just go in and, like, kill all the orcs, right? They're the best. Back when I was a kid, life was going swell Till something happened, blew everything to hell That night my daddy stumbled in, all pale and weak Set a woman up the block, just gave birth to a geek Mom said, sell it to the circus, what the heck Dad said, nope this one's a pencil neck. And if there's one thing lower than a sideshow freak, it's a gritty, scum-sucking, pencil neck geek. You see, if you take a pencil that won't hold lead, looks like a pipe cleaner attached to a head. Add a buggy whip body with a brain that leaks. You got yourself a grit-eating pencil neck geek. Pencil neck geek, grit-eating freak. Scum sucking P.S. with a lousy physique. He's a one man, no cut, losing streak. Nothing but a pencil neck geek. Pencil neck geek. Soon the geeks were popping up all over town. You couldn't hardly sneeze without knocking one down. After a nice juicy steak, if you need a toothpick, just reach for a geek. They'll do the trick. One day we cut one up for fish bait. Learned our lesson just a little bit late. Soon as the geek hit the drink, the water turned red. Next day, sure enough, all the fish were dead. Pencil neck geek, gritty freak, 
scum-sucking d-head with a lousy physique. He's a one-man, no-good, losing streak. Nothing but a pencil neck geek. Any night, you know where I can be found? Yeah, stomping some geeks head into the ground. So keep the faith, cause in Blassie you can trust. I won't give up till the last geek bites the dust. Pencil neck geek, gritty freak, scum sucking d head with a lousy physique. He's a one man, no gut, losing streak. Nothing but a pencil neck geek. They say these geeks come a dime a dozen. I'm looking for the guy who's applying the dimes. It's gonna be real hard times for all of these gritty, scum sucking, boot licking, drop kicking, gut grinding, nail biting, glue sniffing, scab picking, butt scratching, egg hatching, sleazy, smelly, pepper belly, dirty, lousy, rotten, stinking freaks. Nothing but a pencil neck. Thank you.